Hey everybody, I'm TJ Majors, spotter of the six cup car, the eight Xfinity car, and Freddie is alive. Ready. I'm always alive. <laughs> Brett Griffin, uh, Freddie and I leave for Vegas tomorrow, Tuesday. We're there all week, so he may not be alive on Wednesday. TJ, uh, I'm sorry. Freddie, uh, up and down, left and right day for you. Yeah, yeah. What's up, Freddie Crash spotter for Bubba Wallace, who which Bubba had easily the best road course weekend of weekend. his career. Yeah. Like, I mean, I don't know what, like, we're not going to be able to say he sucks at road courses anymore, I don't think. Uh, but, yeah, we'll get into that. What's up, Casey? Hey, hey, Casey Boat here. And we have a very special guest today. The vice president of NASCAR <laughs> Meteorology, <laughs> the, the president of NASCAR Lights, and probably the coolest guy in the room today. I got to tell you guys, though, he, he sent out a viral video about how he, he's smarter than everybody in this room, oh, and just... he called me 20 minutes ago. He couldn't find the studio. Mr. Bob Hopper. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I said directions weren't my thing. All right. You know, hey, well, it's great to be here. Glad, Welcome to, be, back. glad to be back. How many appearances DVC. is this for you? I think this is my second. Second. I thought it was your No, third. it was third because the first one was, was Pockrass. Yep, Pockrass. Then you came last year. I don't think he came last year. You, you did last come year? last year for sure. He's looking at you like you're crazy. I don't I think you're crazy because I don't remember yeah. doing a show with him last no, year. No, I don't I don't remember. This is my first with Freddie. Yeah. It's kind of why I made Dang, it's been a while then. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, that has been a while. Do you know how long Bob Pockrass has been covering NASCAR, Freddie? How long? Since 1991. I was nine years old. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, how old are you? I'm 54. Wow, 54. you're a good looking 54. <laughs> Brett, you're 53. You've been, right? you've been better to your body than I have. <laughs> you're running 5Ks these days. 10Ks, half marathons. Yeah. What are we up to? I did a half uh, you're not? earlier this year, but that was tough. <laughs> Andrew wants you to join That's him tough. on his, That's... his Iron Man. No, yeah. right. no, I can't swim at all. <laughs> <laughs> I can't swim at all. But We got we got like, a pill like, you can like, take whoa, that helps like you float. You can't swim at all? <laughs> well, I can swim, but be really, really really slow like are you doggy paddling or are you actually swimming <laughs> all i know is like i did a lap <laughs> once at like the iu natatorium we yeah. had like a boy scout event like back when i was 18 16 17 18 <laughs> and like i did a lap in like 50 seconds when most people were doing them in like 30 wow so That's a yeah. solid effort though you can swim you're just slow <laughs> yes yeah. yeah, you could like, get those flippers. They let you wear the flippers in the swimming park. You, you have you swimmies. You wear be, full swimming. Uh, all I know is I'd be eaten by the shark. <laughs> <laughs> Bob has good long run speed, basically. <laughs> but Bob really doesn't need an introduction. We always uh, say on here how he's the hardest working guy in NASCAR. He's the first one to the media center a lot of days. Um, so obviously you're with Fox now. I don't think Bob Pockers has ever put out something that's not a fact. Is that true? Uh, I mean, I put out some opinions. Yeah. And well, there's still facts to, if they're yours. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. And uh, the, uh, I, I do my best. The good news is sometimes we, the facts change, though, pretty quickly in this sport. That I think that's, the, yeah, that's, that's the biggest fact. challenge. The, the that's good, a fact. The good news is we're not going to get our normal Tuesday text from Bob correcting us on whatever dumb <laughs> shit we said on the show this week because he's going to be here. <laughs> well, to that's do why it I first. brought up the fact he's never wrong because he's always telling us how, how dumb we <laughs> yeah. are. He's like, you guys screwed this up. And Casey, by the way, there is no uh, video footage in the Xfinity or Truck Series garage. We know that because of Bob. Uh, so if, if you want to be added to the to the text thread, I was just well, you for know. the record, there was a inquiry about a sponsorship for it. So I'm just saying, there, thought there was going to be, but Andrew, I think this needs to be added to bloopers because I'd love to see these texts every week of like how you're an idiot after they see something wrong. Yeah, we're never gonna share those. So <laughs> no, I just I don't send too many. Occasionally, I mean, it's, it's only once a week. No, <laughs> it's only one text a week with a lot of points to it. <laughs> TJ, if TJ had an opinion, he could be added to it. Yeah, but he's not, so we don't got to worry about that. I agree with Bob. <laughs> Bob speaks for both of us. What about Bob? Bob speaks for both of us. So, Bob, we, uh, man, we did a, a deal um, on Saturday night at the racetrack, 6 o'clock, with a lot of fans. Um, what, what, where do you think the row will fit right now in the whole culture of NASCAR? Because – it was like it was really cool and really new and really exciting. Now that it's one of two road courses, which I know we'll get to, but like, where do you see the Roval fitting in the overall experience of the race fan right now in the schedule? I I don't think it fits in, and that might, and that's not to say it's a bad thing, right? The the dirt race at Bristol didn't fit into anything, but it fit because it was unique, and I think the Roval still is a little bit unique. In, in some ways because of the nature of the track, because the fans, if you sit in the grandstands, you can see the whole 
track for the most part, which is different than other course, yep. than other road courses. But you know, I still, especially with the next gen car, it's been a challenge, and it's uh, you, you know, I, I wouldn't say I was surprised that it stayed on the 2024 schedule, but. You know, I don't know that many would have shed a tear if it wasn't. So, yeah, Jeff Cluck's poll, which has become famous, was was the Robo a good race. It was 60-40 when I got out of the shower this morning. Did you vote yes or no? I haven't voted yet, but if I vote, it'll be yes. Because it, it, it was an intriguing race, and I thought it was – there was you – know, because of the elimination factor. I, if you didn't have the <clears throat> elimination factor, I don't know how – good a race it was but it was a good race in the sense you had all this stuff that you could watch and and see you know what was going to happen and how it was going to impact everything tj you voting yes or no i'm voting no why I, 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 it's just not the track's fault either it's still that these cars are entirely too easy to drive on these things and it like we don't we we have very few very few single car incidents where when you used to go to these road courses that was there was always multiples like tons um now they they get in trouble there's just no they just don't get in trouble much at all the cars are just stuck a lot and i know they slide and they miss chicane every now and then but nothing like what we've seen in the past and nothing like what we like we go to we go to watkins Glen, uh and arguably it's a single file race and nobody really moves anywhere um that's because they're not the, 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 to me, the cars just have too much grip still, and they, they're just too easy to drive on the road courses. We need the finesse factor back where, um, you know, I, I just just from what I see. Yeah, I mean, yesterday's race. What are you, what are you voting? Yesterday, uh, I would probably say no, just for the fact of, you know, it was it, – these guys, the longer you let them run on a racetrack, they're going to find a way to go faster. They're going to find – you know, ways to kind of, I don't want to say cut the course, but you're going to find ways to make speed. And, and when we're all going the same speed, we can't pass each other. Uh, we've seen that at every racetrack we go to ovals, whatever, short tracks now. Um, and, you know, obviously there was a factor of the, the, the cutoff line add, adding intrigue to it. But, you know, if, if it was up to me, I would have much, pref- that, I would have rather had that race, on the oval yesterday and and just seeing what played out but you see a guy like it, I, I it's tough we spe- you bring them stage cautions back and it's tough because i think like tyler reddick was clearly the best car but he had to chase stage points all the way and he and he has to forfeit his chance to win a race because he's chasing stage points so i don't know it's it's an interesting deal and it's it doesn't bother me it's not it's not a terrible race by any means but it's i would have much rather had that race in the oval it's yesterday. not the track's fault no <clears throat> the track's great i mean the track what they've done with that track and how they created it and the, you know, like the putting the chicanes in, um, doing things like that. Even the restart zone was, was kind of crazy. It was kind of cool, but, um, I think it's not the track's fault at all. They do a really good job. That track looks really good. Like so what when, made the last third of the last stage so crazy? I mean, the last 20 laps were nuts. Well, it's just people just trying to get everything they can. Intensity you know. picks up, as usual, just like well, the I mean, you had guys race. wrecking mid-pack that didn't need to be. Suarez hooked the two into us. Then yeah. Bell dumped Suarez. Um, somehow, Jones, Eric Jones had more stop-and-go penalties yesterday. <laughs> than I, I, the whole first half of the race, all I heard was, all right, 43 has <laughs> served his stop-and-go. 43 yeah. has served another stop-and-go. <laughs> yeah, I guess he kept blowing the backstretch, which I, I don't know if we talk about it. We probably do. Uh, so I'll wait for that. But like, it was, it was just, I think it was just mid pack guys making mistakes. Like it wasn't, you didn't see the racing for the lead get crazy. Like, you know, I feel like every year we have somebody like we saw on Saturday, we have somebody blow turn one and, and wipe out half the field or, or just drive himself into the fence. Was that because the restarts on that we didn't see it? <clears throat> uh, I don't know. I mean, it, we were still racing into turn one. It was You can still overdrive the corner. Yeah, you can still bomb it. It's just in easier to overdrive the Jim corner. Jim proved that. We've yeah. seen that. It's on easier Saturday. to overdrive when you start on the big track because you're not coming out of a corner. Yeah. So, it, but it, were it, they making mistakes because their you know their brakes were getting hot? Were they making mistakes because they're fatigued, or did they just? I, make I think mistakes? that like I was watching the Suarez that took us out was. I mean, I think they were just pushing hard. They were three wide behind Austin Cindric, and. They just all fighting for the same corner, and somehow all, uh, Suarez just turned and hit Austin <laughs> in the right rear and took hooked him into us. Like I don't know if he just turned to the corner too soon or what he did. Uh, then I seen Bell was kind of up his ass off of eight and just decided to, to to get rid of him. I guess like I don't know. I, I didn't. It didn't really hurt my feelings. Well, very much. I will say though that's a corner where 
they try to you try to pinch the guy down. Yeah, you can get him to slow and, down just a little bit more. And to Bell's credit, like if Bell if Bell checks up there off of eight, if he's he checks passed. up there to to give Daniel a break, he, that now that not only slows him down for turn eight. That slows him down all the way back around to the bus stop chicane on the back stretch. So you can't really give a lot there. I mean, obviously, you don't probably want to wreck a guy, but you know, at the same time, you can't really just check up and stop and lose all your momentum because you're probably going to get eaten alive once you get up on the oval. Now, Bob, back to your comment around it not necessarily fitting within the schedule, but isn't really supposed to fit just like the dirt track. Do you think that maybe this race should have been – not a cutoff race during the playoffs, but still, you know, still be entertaining, but not necessarily make or break for drivers. Well, I mean, I think it makes the fact that it is a cutoff race is what makes it intriguing. Right. So if it's not a cutoff race, I don't know how, uh, how exciting it is and how I, I guess it'd be the one interesting piece would be how would these drivers in the playoffs play it? You know, would they all then end up trying to get stage points instead of the ones who are already like feeling like they have to win um, flipping if you the take stages. the stage breaks out again, it's not, it's worse, big time. The only way that thing got interesting was because this, the leaders cycled to the back into the pack. Yeah, and I think there's still a way to. I you know I hate the stage breaks at road courses. I think there's a way to do the if you move the brakes around a little bit. There's a way to make that decision a little bit harder for the teams of whether you're not you can chase points or chase the win. But Bob, where do you where do you sit on? Obviously, next year we're gonna have two drafting tracks quote unquote and two road courses in the playoffs where does that sit with you um the, the two I, I like Watkins Glen in the playoffs as a track I'm still wondering whether fans who normally camp in August will be able to camp in September because their kids are in school it's not necessarily the same time vacation time so I'm curious what it's going to do to the fan experience but as far as competition wise I'm definitely better with two row courses than I am two uh, drafting super speedways. So forty percent of the playoffs are essentially what we call wild card races. Yeah, and it's I I probably prefer thirty <laughs> percent. And, I, and, I, and, I, I, and talking, I just I think, I think the bigger question and and you get different opinions is how long is Atlanta going to be uh, a you know this in the playoffs, but B also is it going to change as it gets more worn? Yeah. So the biggest thing I've talked to drivers about over the past week is road racing over the last year became more important. Next year, it is the most important it's ever been in our sports history. You've got several in the regular season and now two in the playoffs. It's almost like if you aren't good at a road course, you may not get out of that first or second round. I mean, it's, it's big time wild card, right? When you look at guys that are phenomenal road racers, they're probably looking at this thing and grinning. Yeah, Reddick, you know, like Chase Elliott. Mm -hmm. You know, these guys are and, – and there's guys that are – listen, you know, Bubba was one of them. I don't think he is anymore. Bubba's putting a lot of time in. He's put a lot – Reddick has helped a lot with stepping our game up over there. But, you know, there's guys out there that you look, they run in the 30s still. They're, you know, 10-year veterans that run in the 30s of these road course races. And now you're – you put two of them in the playoffs and you're like – uh, okay, well, I guess we're just going to be done now. Like, well, that's the end of our Let's season. go back to, you know, this playoffs, because I we'll talk about the season a little bit later. Right now, as of yesterday, Chastain, Wallace, Kozlowski, and Bush all eliminated. Are these surprises to you? I uh, mean, obviously, Freddie, you're little. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I was hoping we could make the round of eight, and if we did a better job last week, we we might have been in position to, to help ourselves this week. But... Um, yeah, I, I don't think any real surprise. I mean, I thought Brad was going to be more consistent and probably get to the round of eight, but they, they didn't have a good day yesterday. Uh, Kyle Busch didn't surprise me. I think I might have picked him to be out this round. They just they just haven't been hitting on it. They had a bad round. Uh, Ross, same thing. They haven't really the, – the track house cars haven't really had the speed of late, like the second half of the year, really. Um, so not no real surprises there, but I don't know about you guys. I got to say, Chastain and Wallace are disappointing not to go any further in the, in the playoff. Um, we know how fast those Toyotas are. And Wallace is uh, obviously having one of his best seasons, if not his best season ever. Ross was a Final Four guy last year. So to see the car as fast as Bubba not go any further and the driver as capable as Ross is disappointing. But you look at Keselowski and Bush, um, champions. And, and I have to say they're eliminated, but they 
honestly did a lot better this year than I thought they would do, given Kyle first year at RCR, three wins. That's a big deal. Keselowski last year, I mean, we talked about their struggles. Here he is in the in the round of 12. The biggest thing he's missing from his resume this year is a win, and there's a couple times he's had a chance. But I still say the two guys that I'm, I'm disappointed in, Chastain, Wallace, the two guys I think had better seasons than I thought they would, Keselowski and Bush. I'd be more disappointed if, in Keselowski and Bush because I felt like they really took themselves out. Uh, Keselowski, I know he said, you know, that you – I thought the push of Hosevar was probably – a little oh, bit. Oh, TJ. What? Mm. Don't hit Bob, TJ. Oh. Jeez, Am Bob. I supposed to hide now? Uh, <laughs> Bob, you're how, supposed to use facts here. How, how, come, how come you told him to push uh, Jose Bar in that Keep moment? shoving. I have this I have this, uh, <laughs> this app on my phone where I can move, you know, throttle it up when I, I need see. to. And I'm yeah. like, nope, we're going. Um, so. Yeah, no, I agree, though. We kind of we dug a hole for ourselves a little bit in Talladega. If we finished Talladega, even just finished the race, we're probably – or on the verge of being in. I, honestly, the way Truex ran yesterday, I really I feel like we make it because we um, he didn't run very well. And if we had we had some different a point scenario going into that, we probably run right around maybe eighth to fifteenth most of the race, which would have got us in compared to where Truex ran. So Truex last three races: seventeenth, eighteenth, twentieth finishing. Don't even go three. Go last six. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, let's go His five or six. 13, 13, 36, 19, 17, 18, 20. Yeah. His, His best six. finish is 17th yeah. in the last six races. So, and, if, and he's one restart away from Texas being out. Because if we could have executed that restart and won that race, that puts Martin out. Yeah. Like, you know, and, yeah, so we can now finally put an end to the Regular season champion needs to have a buy. He's getting a buy. He's getting. He's got two buys now. He's got two buys. Yes. <laughs> and if yes. they don't step up, he's probably you know. The, this then he'll is the be bye bye. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is not going to be a round where I don't think I don't think he can. He can't run seventeenth, eighteenth, and, and get through this no. round. No, and it's not. It's been kind of. He's had a couple things happen. A couple things about you know a little bit of bad luck. Um, <clears throat> the tire at Kansas. I think there was one other race where something happened. But well, Darlington, you know, he, he hits the wall and they don't really fix the car that's, yeah. so because I, he felt like. But that's still self-inflicted, though. Absolutely. So absolutely. that's not, you know, the, the, the blow on the tire thing to me is more luck. The, the, the thing at Darlington could have been, hey, we hit the wall. We should probably check it. That could have been, you know, that's you don't know. But obviously, Darlington, he's good at Darlington. I feel like he could have. And, and that team's good enough. I feel like they could have ran that race and picked like Harvick. Harvick doesn't qualify well. Their bid gets two, three cars every run. There he is at the end of the race in the top five. True he hit the wall yesterday, it. and he almost took himself out of yesterday. I saw race. it. Yeah. yeah, could get up onto the big track and won. Yeah, I, um, yeah and but you look at what's coming: Las Vegas, Homestead, Martinsville. Those fit Martin Truex pretty That's, damn well. Yeah, they call it Martinsville for a reason. The guy's really good there. Uh, <laughs> he is he is <laughs> underrated. His ability to run the wall at Homestead. He is very underrated there because, you know, you always everybody talks about Larson and Reddick and them guys, but like Martin is one of the best at getting up there and running the wall at, at uh, Homestead, and then the, the Vegas we we've all, the Toyotas always have speed a mile and a half, so it should hopefully for them it should lay out for a better round for him, but they they need to they need to find a gear I mean, if they want to contend for the championship. Who are they, who are they going to beat right now? When you look at, it, I mean, Larson, <laughs> I mean, he, he let. He, you pretty much pencil him in at Homestead, most likely. He won Martinsville. Byron won um, Vegas earlier this year. You have Hamlin, who's going to be good every week. And, you know, and Reddick you know, right now is. This, I, this I just, round I, lays I, out really well for Tyler Reddick as yeah. well. Tyler yeah. Reddick is. I still think Byron's the guy to beat. So, I think he's the most consistent guy at all the tracks we go to. And, like, the Denny. Denny and um, the other guys there, they just they're 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 really fast, but then they just have that they peaks and valleys a little too much. Why are you talking about Denny? <sighs> tell me, tell me this: it's how many guys? How many guys make the final four on points? Four. No. <laughs> um, uh, uh, I'd say two. Two. Yeah, that's probably about it. I say I say <clears throat> one. You think we have three winners? I think we have three winners. So who are who are they? But I'll say this: I mean, last year I didn't foresee. Um, Three winners in the first round that were in the playoff. I didn't necessarily, even though I picked AJ Almendinger to win yesterday. It's it's hard to win these dang playoff races. 
And it just shows you yesterday. It's hard to win a regular race. It is hard to win any race. <laughs> but but I think yesterday shows us how good AJ Allmendinger is. But it also played into what you guys said earlier: is he did not have to worry about stage points at all. Yeah, he went for the win. You see, the guys yeah. that were up there contending were were sold out on trying to win the race. AJ, Ty Gibbs, Kyle Busch, the guys at the end at, up there at the end of the race were just one hundred percent selling out. Ryan the Blaney and Christopher <laughs> Bell had better race for a win. Because they ain't going to make it on points, I don't think, unless they just dominate the first race, stage one, stage two, pile in. Like It's going to take a win to get in if you're way back in points. I'm glad Freddie He's finally, only 10 back, though. <clears throat> I'm glad you finally saw the light where, you know, where, like I Freddie, did, Freddie I, saw the I light. Didn't, I two weeks, oh, yeah, you might not have seen the light. I still don't see it. I think we, I th- I think we would have been better off yesterday not racing for stage points. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. You, you, said, you said you raced to win. Yeah. Well, why didn't you race to win, Freddie? I, that's that was a, we made they made a decision to race for stage point. You hold on a second. <laughs> Wasn't he the one telling me I had to chase stage points two weeks ago? I still think you chase the stage points, but I sit in here and listen to you saying we you race to win. The guy we, up here we, says we race to win. We race to win. <laughs> like, that we race to win at Texas. You because we to, had a car to win. I don't know that we had a car to win yesterday, but let me tell you something. We I think you could have won. We could have won the race yesterday. I, I think, think if you got we, out front. Yeah. If we could have because we outran AJ the first half of the race, yeah. and and if we you know obviously hindsight's twenty twenty, but. You know, if we raced, if we just flipped the stages and and got out front, Bubba could have easily won that race yesterday. You Our were, cars you were, were better. super fast. I think you were. Yeah, there's no reason. Like, I think if he would have got out front, I think AJ would have given him. I think AJ would have get him a, a couple fits on restarts and stuff. But if he could have got clearing out front, yeah. man, it was going to be hard to pass. Bob, who are your champ for picks now? Who are my champ for? Uh, Hamlin, Larson, Byron, and... No, I had Truex at the start of the playoffs. Starting to waver? Uh, yeah, I, I'd go with Reddick right now. Guess we'll find out soon. Well, before we head into spot on, spot off, I do want to give a shout out to everyone who came out to the appearance at the Charlotte Mother Speedway on Saturday. It was such a cool crowd. Um, my wooden idiot is whoever gave Freddie a baby to hold. Um, but You held a baby? It, I did. He did. The ba- the guy asked <laughs> For how me, long? he said, Can you hold my baby? And I said, Yeah, sure, I guess. The baby <laughs> like, was like, <laughs> like the rapper the baby or a real baby? No, a actual baby. baby. Wow. Uh, and then the baby was not about it. Like the baby was screaming, it looked like TJ. He was screaming and crying. <laughs> and then as I'm holding, he says, Will you sign my baby? And that was where I drew the line. Like we had to <laughs> Someone wanted you. Didn't you didn't sign the baby? I did not I was not signing the baby. That was where I, I had to draw the line somewhere, and that's where the line got oh, drawn. Oh man. <laughs> What if they just would have walked off? Here, hold my baby, Freddie. And just, and just take off. <laughs> <laughs> Gave it to the wrong person. Well, thank you to everyone. Thank you for Charlotte Mother Speedway for having us out. Um, I am so excited to do it again soon. Experience the thrill of the racetrack like you're in the driver's seat with DraftKings Sportsbook. Bet on your favorite racers and feel the rush of every pass, pit stop, and victory like never before. Right now, new customers can turn 5 bucks into 200 instantly in bonus bets. Bet 5 on anything to score big, no matter what goes down on the track. The stakes are high as the round of 8 kicks off this week in Las Vegas for the Cup Series. A win here for a playoff driver locks you into the Final Four. With so much on the line, tune into Dirty Mo Doe this week as they'll handicap the field and recommend bets to watch. With props, parlays, and more, there'll be plenty of action to follow all race long. The racing action doesn't stop till the checker flag drops. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and join with code CLEAR. That's C-L-E-A-R. New customers can bet $5 to get 200 instantly in bonus bets. That's code CLEAR. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. Let's move into spot on, spot off. First topic, NASCAR announces the 2024 schedule. Among the changes include adding a second road course in the playoffs, a first-time trip to Iowa, and Darlington as the regular season cutoff. Bob, spot on, spot off. Spot off. Uh, If you're going to go to Iowa, I think you need to go there and say, hey, we're going to go there for three years or four years and not leave it like, well, is it just a holder place for Montreal or not? Uh, You know, they're like, well, it's, you know, it's great. Fans have been clamoring for it. This is the right time. Well, I mean, NASCAR's owned it since for 10 years. So why was it 10 years ago the (laughs) right time? They bought it to save it. Or nine years ago or eight years ago. um, So I've never been there. Uh, So I I was. Highly recommend. So I'm looking forward to going. I would just hate that 
if I would just hate for to go there once and then say, okay, well, now we've got the Montreal or somewhere in Mexico, got the international race and they're going to leave it. If, if, if they were going to, if it's just a one year plan, I would have said, Hey, just go to Homestead for a second race or go to, in, instead of maybe lifting people's hopes up. As far as the playoffs, I, I just think making Daytona the next to last race of the regular season just takes, takes away a lot of the drama that and made you that had race a fix special. For that. You had I, did, I did. I want you to did, share. Did you like that crazy fix? I, I, I love it. it. I, I said, why not just have the regular season be 25 races and the regular season at Daytona and have the first round be four races? And then maybe your two wild card races in that Doesn't, round don't, d- make, yeah. don't make as as big a difference. And it Because, it, listen, the only reason these races got moved around is because of the calendar. You know what I mean? The, the schedule itself, we didn't want, they didn't want to do a midweek race or a doubleheader. So then the way the calendar lays out, and this is only going to happen once every four years, is be, you know because of the, the Olympic double break there. Um, it, Are you saying NBC is going to sign back <clears> up? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to assume so. Bob, what are you hearing on that? I have no clue. <laughs> You're lying. Bob that, can't talk that's about not a That's a rival that company. Is, <laughs> that is not a fact. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, there's a lot to like about the schedule. There's a lot to not like about the schedule. Uh, my biggest thing, obviously, we're going back to Chicago. There was some, some, some talk about that. And I think Chicago deserves the chance to have the, their, the weekend they planned on. Obviously, last year that, or this year, that got kind of – derailed by weather and stuff so i know they people out there worked hard and 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 they deserve to have another race i don't like the way the playoffs lay out i think that you know i know they say they want to challenge drivers but you're not challenging drivers at that two plate tracks you're 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 testing their luck if anything um so i don't i don't love the way the playoffs lay out but there's you know there's there's ups and downs of this whole schedule i do i love iowa i agree with you I, i want to hear you guys opinion on this though do we look dumb for not continuing to race on dirt. Do we let Marcus Smith and SMI go out there and have this experiment at one of our best racetracks and then completely abandoning the dirt idea and not actually taking it to a real dirt track? Is that what, – what, what does that say about the whole dirt track thing? Well, it, I mean, the question is, do you look dumb when you have windshields at a dirt track? Do you look dumb when you don't have dirt track, like late model type suspension in your vehicle so that you can race it? Like it, dirt track fans are used to seeing them race. That I think that's to me the biggest so you hurdle. Think we, I think I think if you're going to go to a dirt track, build a dirt car. Yes, and I, yeah. and and that may be way too expensive and way too uh, big of a. I wouldn't, it wouldn't be too big of a challenge. I mean, these teams could could do it, but it, it just it. I, I know some people kind of enjoy watching the struggle <laughs> yeah. of, of those cars on dirt, oh, but I would sure. love to be able to see them just slide and do what you can I get so see. tired of hearing our, our industry say too expensive. And I don't mm. mean that towards no. you, Bob. I just, no. what is too expensive to Rick Hendrick? Well, how much money is he worth? <laughs> how many billions? Oh, enough. I mean, I, I, I get tired of us saying to, what are, why are we catering to the guy that can't afford to be here so much? Why is why is why are these owners raising well, their hand? We're spending wasn't too much the, money. Wasn't the goal of the car and just the changes that they've made the goal eventually to make it more like Economical. fair for all for yeah. all teams, right? How's that so the, out? the underdog teams. If you well, listen, if you listen to Action Gentlemen last week, you got a lesson on that not working out very well. <laughs> yeah. Well, so so I struggle with removing dirt altogether. Um, I love obviously the Daytona 500. I love that weekend. How you feel about um, the Clash staying in LA? I I, I hate Atlanta. Because it's going to be so damn cold. Yeah. I mean, I've been oh, down there and sat beside a Rick, yeah. Rick Corelli, literally dressed like an Eskimo. I've been in the infield in 1997, uh, and, and I'm telling you, man, it was freezing. It was mm-hmm. below freezing. I mean, you and have a chance of snow. The, the, the fan experience. <laughs> well, it snowed at California, too. Yeah, yeah. I have a chance. <laughs> I guess anywhere. Um, <laughs> true. So, so that's where I struggle with, like, the Bristol and Atlanta being so early. But hands down, the only thing that I despise about this schedule is the fact that that Phoenix is still the championship race. It needs and has to move around. The NBA moves the All-Star game around for a reason. 
the NFL moves the Super Bowl around for a reason. Like, we've got to give our fans some diversity. We've got to give the drivers some diversity. And I hope when they look at 2025 that we do get to Canada because I'm a big supporter of our friends to the north. I've been to Mexico City. I don't care to ever go back there to another race. But I hope we get to Montreal, and I just hope we move this freaking championship off of Phoenix. I, you know, I, How do I feel about the clash? Freddie has run his course. I, I would love to see that move around, move. too. We've proven we can run it literally anywhere. So why don't you go build it in downtown Miami at, at where the Dolphins play? Why don't you go somewhere? And people say, oh, that's close to Homestead. The same crowd that goes to Homestead does not live in Miami, Florida. No. No chance. <laughs> no. You know, my the the talk about Phoenix, you know, I, ideally, I would – if you want to leave Phoenix in the championship talk, make make the final round – the final round – Three races, you know, let let them, the three races you have in the five, the last three races of the year, just make that a championship round. Cut it to four by then, and let them four guys race it out. Because then Phoenix, by I'm fine with it. If you leave, if you leave the schedule as is, but make those rounds. Now you've got Homestead, Martinsville, Phoenix as your last three races with four guys competing for the championship. Obviously, Phoenix matters, but it doesn't. It's not the end all, be all. And you could go in there and then have a good race for the championship. But that's obviously never going to happen because we, you know, the, the they want the idea of the final four at the last place. And we see it every year. the The thing I hate about Phoenix being the championship race is it just comes down to whoever wins the race off pit road on the final pit stop. That's all that. Like a Homestead, if your car is good, you know we've seen it in years past. Homestead, your car is good, you can go up there and race and potentially beat the guy. You know Martinsville, you can move the guy out of the way if you need to. Like home Phoenix. It, it, it's just whoever wins the race off pit road is your champion. Yeah, but, and I but, don't think that should be decided that way. But even if it's Homestead as your championship race, it shouldn't be there every year. No, because, no, because you you're going to have somebody with an advantage. Right. Yeah. You you want your, you don't want somebody to have an advantage. If somebody's great at Phoenix to always be able to, you know, have, have an advantage or if somebody's off at Phoenix to yeah. be at disadvantage, I, I, you that, want it to move around so that, it rewards drivers uh, who have different uh, capabilities. That's just that's another reason why I think it needs to be more than a single race to decide your champion. Like you could be if you go to that round and, and you have Denny Hamlin, who's obviously phenomenal, marvelous, terrific, whatever you want to say at at Martinsville. Then you've got Kyle Larson, who's unbelievable at Homestead, and and then neither one of them are really unbelievable, but they run really well at Phoenix. It, it just levels the playing field, I think. How many tracks are on this schedule, Bob, that are not championship worthy? Let's look. <laughs> Let's that, look. That like saying, I mean, but if you literally I mean, said, if you said we're gonna have well, a lottery, I, I, like I wasn't, I wouldn't have your championship at Daytona, no. Talladega, or Atlanta. But if you're, if you're or gonna have, it? if we were gonna have a lottery right now, <laughs> and we were gonna have balls in a little balls in a big ball, and we're gonna spin it around, <laughs> and then we're gonna pull a little ball. ball out of the big ball. Like what little ball doesn't deserve to be? What characterizes what characters does a championship track have for you? For me, racy, like like. Well, it, saying, I like, think right now, I think if if we're – obviously, we're not going to – just saying right now, not changing the package, nothing, the championship race needs to be at a mile-and-a-half track. I don't, care, I don't care which one, just at a mile-and-a-half track because that's what's producing our best racing right now. If you have – the fastest car should win the race, in, in my opinion. Like, that, 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 maybe that's a purist in me, whatever. But if you have the fastest car, you should always have the ability to win a race. If you come out of the pits fourth at Phoenix with the fastest car, guess where you're going to finish? Fourth, you better get a really good restart. Yeah, <laughs> you know that, that's the thing that drives me crazy about that race. You better hope Ross Chastain's running third. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you know, it's and that, should be a track that jab. you don't go to at at all during the year. Oh yeah, isn't yes. that what made uh, so, Homestead so good? Yeah, yes. at times, right? absolutely. Yeah. So who? What track is that? Looking at the looking at the product Ho from this year, there's nothing wrong. The Homestead should be the place, you know. And, Again, but at the same point, yeah. But at the same time, you're giving an advantage to guys like Larson and Reddick. Who can can just get on the wall and run the wall better than anybody? Some guys else. are gonna. I mean, no matter what track you go to, somebody's gonna have an advantage because everyone's got different driving yeah. traits and characteristics, and they're all you know. But I feel like if you run, I mean, if you go to Kansas, Kansas is a place where the car you know, it's a combination of car and driver. There's nobody. I can tell you right now, your cars are gonna be stupid. Oh fast yeah, at Kansas. yeah. <laughs> but I'm just saying. But that's the car. Yeah. Like that's the that's the car we got right now, and that's gonna we we've seen it year in and year out. That comes and goes. Somebody has a, a, a manufacturer has a slight advantage somewhere, um, but that, that's a place where I think that there's nobody that has a distinct advantage, and and 
and the, you're racing for the for the championship, not just. I feel okay. like there's two or three guys that are pretty decent at Kansas. That oh, there's a like lot of guys. Denny's there. probably one of yeah, them. Yeah, for sure. Denny's probably that's probably one of his better. But tracks, I'm just saying, honestly. there's nowhere you go. Oh, Denny, like you go to Homestead, you're gonna say Larson's gonna kick our ass here because like Larson can just run the wall better than anybody else. Reddick's but I also very think that if, that if Reddick's in it, you know, I, I want to see that battle. Yeah, for sure. But you know what I mean. But, but they, we, like, we can be the scheduled death. Bob, I got one question because you're the most omniscient person in the room. <laughs> what What's the latest on Fontana? What's going on? that place oh well they haven't started knocking down any parts of the track yet that they have started building around the track from the lane that they've sold but they still haven't started construction on Mm. this half mile track that they're supposedly going to build i think the only thing i think is that hey if they weren't going to build it they would have sold that land too already you know they've kept that 90 acres i think they have a plan for it they just want it to be a little bit more economical than what they're projecting their costs right now. Well, construction costs are expensive. Yeah, right now. I like the current track. Does that matter? Yeah. So nobody. That would be a great place to have a championship race. Oh, it'd be phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. But but nothing has been touched. Well, uh, not yet. Not yet. I mean that the whole track still exists, yeah, but I, I think know. within the next month or two, part of that backstretch is going. Wow, it's one of the best parts of the track because <laughs> they all complain about it. Yeah. Back to Charlotte. NASCAR changes the restart zone this year, making the field go through the chicane on the front stretch for the first time. And I know, Andrew, you have an audio clip. You want to play that first? Yeah, I um, let me. Uh, get I'll your get together. Will y'all, you? y'all start talking. I'll, All right, TJ, I'll spot on, spot off. I need to hear the audio clip so I can react. Uh, to it. I'm, I'm spot on. For Jason it. Schultz would have had the audio clip ready. Oh, oh he would have absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll spot on it because it kind of there was still some. You know, a guy could get a little loose out of the corner still, and they could get make some runs and stuff. But it was way more tame in the turn one. You didn't have the the dive bomb moves and the three wides that weren't just going to work, and it wasn't everybody running over each other as bad. Yeah, I thought that I, you know, it did what it was supposed to do. That's yeah. what they wanted. Uh, we've seen the same thing in Indianapolis. We've seen the same, you know, multiple tracks. They moved the restart zone. Um, you know, and it was it was not. I I was concerned about being mid pack. You know, in that deal, in which we were, we ended up 25th or so when we came out after flipping stages. And I was, you know, I could, I was more concerned about guys getting in the mid pack, they're getting tight or throttling up and wrecking off of the corner and, and being hit in the fence. And we didn't see any of that. The guys, they, they raced with respect. There were the most part. close moments, yeah. but it was all right. The last restart there, uh, I don't know if it was the last restart, but when, when Kyle was on the front row with AJ, I was like, well, this is going to get big. And he, he went for it, but he he got loose. You know, he throttled yeah. up and was spinning tires and start finish line. He got loose, and and AJ drove away. But you know, this, this bullet point snuck up on Andrew, but he's ready now. Okay, you're ready? yeah, I'm ready. Mm-hmm. Here's Blaney after the race. Yeah, it was tricky. I kind of restarted, you know, way in the back. I restarted in the top ten. I restarted middle of the pack. It was all right. It's kind of it's hard to see, like you know, when everyone's bunched up, it's hard to see like the curbs. And you were right, right behind somebody. You can't see it, and you'll jump it, and, or they jump it because they can't see the guy in front of them, and so you can get jumbled up quick. But I think it's uh, calmed everything down a little bit. You didn't see that just absolute calamity into one like like normal. Better, you'd say. I think it's better. I um, I, I'll, I'll share my opinion before Bob goes. I felt like it gave the guys in the very front a huge advantage because they're just throttling up and leaving. Other people have to drive into the corner, break, make two corners, and then get back to the gas. So if it were up to me, I would throw the green in turn three. Bob? Um, God, can I agree with Brett? Yeah. That, no. like that would just no. be – No. No, you can – There can, goes all that. There goes all that talk idea. about being smart. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it was, it was really weird to see. And – Grant at Chicago, there were drivers who were taking the green before they made that right hander to go in that little, um, I don't know what you would call it, the, that, that little stretch before, yeah, the, before the main stretch, right? <laughs> um, so, yeah, it, I thought it was weird and I, I liked it better than what was before, but I do think they probably might need to take a look at it and see. See if if there's maybe a more equitable way place. Brad, to do you start. realize? Uh, I guess the, the question then is, where do you put the choose, and then does that, um, and then does that put you in jeopardy of having another lap under caution because you can't get everything set for them to be able to choose and come to the restart? I don't. I don't think you could throw the green. 
before <laughs> that chicane. That's the same thing as do, yeah, how it was before. It would, have, it would have been a disaster. Like yeah, yeah. I, I don't think he won. I think it was fine yesterday. Like if you throw the green in turn three <laughs> and make us race into that chicane, hey, we're it's gonna, gonna be go. a show. <laughs> but, I mean, I, does, does Brett realize that where the back of the Brett back don't half, realize he was drunk. Listen, where the thing. back half of the field is in Martinsville and Bristol when they get the green, they all got to slow down. Still, I was one hundred percent sober yesterday watching that race. <laughs> okay, can't say the same about that. He before. was actually so twenty um, fifth has to slow down in Martinsville, and you ain't never complained about that. When but, we when we did that deal in Chicago, I laughed my ass off because. I had a spotter over there by the restart zone to call the green. Yeah. And then we had that spotter in turn 12 or whatever it was on Symphony yeah, Hall. Yeah, Symphony deal. So the guy would call the green and then we would have to go back to the spotter in turn 12 to call because <laughs> yeah. we were in the back of the pack. All I have to say is Bob agree with me, so f*** y'all. <laughs> whatever. But to, but, but he to, said he liked this better than the other way. Yeah. So he's really saying F I you, bro. Right? <laughs> I didn't say I like this way better or worse than the other way. But he just to said, that point, let us race into that chicane. I just said I don't <laughs> like the front four having that big of an advantage. Well, if you want the advantage, be in the front yeah, four. Yeah, get in the front four. I was at home. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> but to that point where it obviously was a disadvantage for the guys further back and strategy, especially pit strategy, came into play here for you, Freddie, and TJ, I guess. You know, how was your strategy different knowing that you had to start further back compared to when you were towards the front? Uh, our strategy flip-flopped like three different times that race, depending on what cards you're dealt there. Um Things happen on the track, and you're forcing. We were kind of forced into a strategy at one point, and then we actually it kind of worked in our favor because we got up there in the top ten. And I think I don't know. I didn't follow the points all day. We were just trying to get everything we could. And at one point, I, I like just I think we were still when Truex was in 18th, 19th, or whatever, and we were in the top ten. I think it was really close. It was, was it close? It was within it had ten. To be. Yeah, I think we were actually above him for a little bit really? when we were up in the top 10 and he was like 20th or something we were we were in but um i don't know i mean it, you're sometimes you're just forced into a strategy like freddie's race was kind of laid out for him get stage points both stages and and fight through the pack at the end and you know we were kind of on the other side of it where we've kind of flip-flopped a little bit and had a couple things happen in, in our race that, that forced us into pitting and staying out at times but you know that's what happens when you have the stages and stuff and but interesting for sure all right moving on spot on spot off jeb burton crashes into justin allgaier in a late race restart taking both drivers out freddy <laughs> wrecked the dog food he out robbed of the dog food out of him. <laughs> uh yeah i mean you knew like, it, 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 we saw i saw him stay out and i was like I know what they're doing, but this is not going to work. You know, it's one <laughs> of the deals. It's like, it's like this is, it's, it wasn't, if it was a green white checker, you maybe take that chance. But I think there was still, what, 10 to go, yeah, something like that. You know, it, it's, that's, it, it's not going to work. Justin, I don't know if somebody from NASCAR called Justin and told him that the recaution was coming, but he pit the yeah, lap before. I, and I said to Bruce on Channel 2, I said, I saw my crew chief, I said, what what's he doing like does he have a problem like what's he doing i said i don't know why i mean i guess you're gonna forfeit third hoping to get a caution um and sure enough as soon as he leaves pit road put it out we got yeah. a, a fucking sign on the front stretch yeah. we got to throw the yellow for now apparently um but how long has that sign been there ah I, no, they, they, I don't think it was very long. I don't know how long it was there, but nobody it was nobody ever talked about it. It wasn't like the flag man on our channel anyway came over <laughs> and said hey yeah we got debris on the front stretch it was just oh put it out and i looked down there i'm like that's what the yellow's for like and you i don't like there's there's uh, there were some drivers complaining is why i ask yeah well i mean it, it didn't need to be a caution i don't think but i would have kept going yeah, yeah. And, it, and it and it and it jumbled the end of the race up obviously it almost cost sam sam mayor did a phenomenal job a marvelous whatever terrific job you want to say yes yeah, uh, really good race. he had to race his way in and he was the best car all day so it was good to see him win and this but, but this caution almost cost him a chance of the win if they don't wreck if those two don't wreck and Justin gets out front because Sam was going to restart fifth or sixth on that restart and Justin gets away, it might be hard for Sam to run him down. Uh, but, yeah, going into turn one, you could see the funny part is we stand right over turn one, obviously. I don't, you're over there, too. Uh, and you like, you see, you start seeing him driving in there, you're like, oh, he's never going to make it. <laughs> yeah. like he's, he's here we go. Just start calling the wreck before it ever happens. Justin did, got did this too good of a start. Anybody? Did no, this surprise no, anybody? No, no. I, one one, <laughs> this guy, is Jim walked, Burton. one guy walked by yeah. me. Uh, I won't say his name, but Lambert um, walked by me and I'm like, where are you going? He's like, tell her him good luck. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. I mean, the, I'm not going to. Go ahead. 
you know, I was talking to Jeb afterward, and he never restarted out front before, right? So I guess the question is, do you put him in that position knowing that he'd never been in that role, in that spot, and expect him not to overshoot the corner? Yeah. And, and, and when in a position where he has to be, that, yes, he's a win, a win there in, was, in there a must-win situation, right? Too but many like, laps left. He was, I mean, I understand him, why he missed why he missed it i mean it, yeah uh, because he has no experience but that in was doing clo- it. that to me that restart was closer to other restarts imagine if we were starting on the big track that would have been even harder to do but that <laughs> like the adjustment he had to make from restarting that last chicane you know it, it probably wasn't that much different than the one thing i will say is as hard as Jeb drove it in a turn one to blow the corner, <laughs> Justin was still next to him. Yeah. <laughs> like Justin was going in there just as hard. Yeah, he was. Because, I mean, they, he didn't, they, they doored each other door to door. It wasn't like, you know, Justin backed his entry up at all. So yeah. I'm not even sure Justin would have made the corner at that point. I don't think Justin can give up the front row in that reset. No. But I also don't think you need to beat him through turn one. You because don't you're have going, to beat him through turn exactly. one. Exactly. So, yeah. and I think Justin got too good of a restart up there next to him. As soon as, as soon as uh, Jeb saw him, he's like, Oh, I need to get in here. Hey, and- my struggle with this is, is is very simple. When you watch a football game, and a lot of people were, compare this to a Hail Mary. Do you have a chance to win a football game when you throw a Hail Mary? Yeah, but you're not going to throw There was no chance Jeb Burton was going to win this you're race. You're not going to you don't throw a Hail Mary in the third quarter. That there was too many laps Jeb Burton left. was not going to win the race yeah. with this move and he obviously didn't. So, yeah. Well, you can't win the race if you take yourself out. You that's, know, that's no. a fact. <laughs> Like you have that to point get, is not a Hail Mary. You have to get through that corner. It's and, kamikaze. And, That's and a Hail Mary that you spike the ball. This is the part that worries <laughs> me about Justin, though, in the playoffs. Like, all he had to do is get through that corner and let Jeb overdrive or not even just have an average corner. Yeah. And if he doesn't force the issue there on the front stretch with on the restart anyway, Jeb's probably not overdoing it and just getting in there. Um, and then Justin's going to pass him within a lap, you know. So, and he was already given a gift with the caution. So take advantage of it. Yeah. Don't like. Freddie, this next one is for you. Spot on, spot off. Bubba Wallace serves his stop and go on the front chicane after the backstretch tangle saying, we're the only series that does that ass backwards. So, listen, <laughs> we talk about this all the time. I don't, the one, the major part of our job is knowing the rules. And I did not know that if you get wrecked through the chicane, you still have to serve yeah. a stop and go. Um, that was going to be my I've never question. Yeah, <laughs> like, like I, I thought, like when you get, I know if you blow it or if you jump the curb or cut the corner, you obviously have to stop. We got wrecked, spun through there, did a three sixty, and and then continued on. Lost, I don't know, ten spots at least. Um, and then while while we're going through three and four in the oval, they're like, oh, it's twenty three, still got to serve a penalty. So then we, I told them to do stop and go on the front stretch, but like, <laughs> I get it, like, but we. We lost track position. We got spun through there. We did, it was nothing of our doing. I don't. I don't think that that warrants a penalty. Like I, I don't. Maybe I'm wrong. I, but I didn't. I didn't know that was a rule. And that's my problem. I should know the rules. But I did not know that if you get wrecked through a chicane, you also have to do a stop and go. I was, yeah, I was under the assumption that if you miss it at all, you got to stop. Like if you miss it, like when our with our deal, when I saw Brad go through that in the front, we ca- we were kind of odd when I saw him because I was looking ahead a little bit. I saw him going over the like we didn't. We were t- we were like partially on the curb, partially not. We didn't hit that sign. I thought, you know what I mean. Remember that sign was sitting for yeah, the start yeah. deal, and I'm I wasn't sure if he missed it. And they started reviewing it, and in the review, um, I guess they because I wasn't I wasn't 100 percent sure, so they were checking it. And in the re- review process, review process, <laughs> they did you hear them tell us to come around and stop on the front again? Yeah. So we're doing that, and in the middle of that, they say, "Oh, we got to come down to a drive through at that point." So we got penalized twice. Well, I heard yeah. uh, I heard them say drive through penalty, and then you stopped on the front, <clears throat> and then they no, they said actually tell the six to come around and stop on the front, and then in the process of that, they said, "Nope, six has to do a drive through." So yeah. I, w- we must have heard different things because I I said on our radio they told the six to do a drive through because obviously we're worried about you because of the point situation. Um, and then I said, oh, he just stopped. I don't know if that's going to clear it. Then they, as soon as you took off from stopping, I said, they, they said, no, you, you have they to do a drive-through. They said two different things. Did, did, they, did <clears throat> they make you do a drive-through because you didn't yes. come to a full stop? Or did they make you do a drive-through because you didn't do it on the lap on that, the lap. You, that uh, yeah, you originally because we violated didn't, the rule? Yeah, if we would have stopped all the way. But the problem was we weren't – he was on – like. I wasn't sure that he had missed it and he wasn't sure. So we, they were reviewing it and they're like, no, we're reviewing it. You got to stop. And then they literally said, stop on the front. 
And in the middle of stopping in the front, they changed it again. They said six out of your drive through and then they start review process. And that's when they said, just have the six stop on the front. And that's when we did that. And then, nope, you got to do a drive through. So there was three different things that happened. It was drive through, stop on the front, then back to drive through in the middle of stopping on the front. So there needs to be a better process for that. Like you should be able to, you should get a chance to be like, oh, yeah, the 23 had nothing to do with that. Make him have him serve a stop on the front chicane or whatever. And, um, you know, whatever it is like that, there should be some sort of, like, I don't think you should have a drive through. No, we, we, we didn't. We stopped. I know, but like I'm just saying, though, there should be some sort of review process. You like, got wrecked. You missed it because yeah. you wrecked. And you, you didn't, didn't try gain, to take an advantage. Did you gain anything? No. no you got lost. shoved out there. So you just you blend back in where you where you come yeah, out. We were spinning through there. They would have <laughs> yeah. needed as many people as they have uh, looking at pit road video. They'd have to have people <laughs> oh, in the okay. review booth uh, checking everybody, right? I mean, as many. I mean, I mean, it's pretty as obvious as to as look at stop somebody. And goes, but yeah, they it's have. pretty obvious to look at a replay or a wreck when that happens and say, "Oh, that guy just got shoved through there. He had nothing yeah. to do with it, and he's already lost track position. Yeah, Why we, we penalize him again?" Yeah, I, I literally didn't even cross my mind. Like we got spun around, we were barely. I mean, we damn near stopped. We Bubba did a good job of getting going again, and I just never even crossed my mind. Like, oh, we have to serve a, a stop and yeah. go too, because I would have if I knew. It was, it was again my fault, but not knowing the rules word for word. Um, I would just said stop, you know, stop and then go. Like, I mean, but but were you in the zone where that would have? Yeah, sufficed? we could. You could I mean, stop. We were still sitting. Like yeah. when he got fo- forward, you know, pointed straight again. We we were basically running. I mean, we were probably moving five miles an hour. I uh, could have just easily said stop and then go. Well, but I think I, there's a lot of ambiguity here because we know when we miss a chicane. Yeah. We don't know in situations like you both had happened to you yesterday. So in that situation, NASCAR should call out. You have to serve a penalty, and here's where you're going to do the stop and go, and then you have time to do it. I don't, I don't, I mean, yesterday they, it sounds like you guys they were doing a good a job spot. of it. Like, like, so they did a good job of that. If you blew the back stretch chicane, they would say, All right, stop over here on the front stretch. But there's no, if you blow the front stretch one and, and, and not even blow it, like Brett, you know, it, it's hard to tell sometimes, like, where the line is. They're, Obviously, they're there's jumping that curb yeah. so much, it's hard to tell. Yeah. Like, you, and, <clears throat> and if you, but if you don't stop on the front stretch, you don't have that grace period of okay now you can stop over here before you do the pass through and obviously a stop and go is much faster than a pass through so yeah like what's wrong with hey we reviewed it stop in the back stretch the cane and take back off again as long as there's no caution in between those two yeah points, nothing. yeah i mean could they say also like if you lose five spots then you don't have to do a stop and go i, I mean, wish happy uh, i wish that be a, <laughs> a, 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 a certainly seems seven. like more than enough five right? what if you lose one spot then well, then you're already down you know what i mean to like if if say bubba would have <laughs> Lost one spot in that blended back in. Why should he be penalized for for losing ground and something he didn't do in general? I mean, even if he loses one spot, if you get hit through there, you're losing ground no matter what. I, I mean, I know it's good. I, I'm just trying spot. to think like if you're trying to save fuel or something, could you like cruise over there, lose one spot, and and save a little space, a little um, distance? I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, that's that's why I would think you you you'd want me, it to be me, significant. Let me ask you this. <laughs> that's a, if it came down to the end of the race and you needed a couple points, would it be faster to just all out blow that chicane on the back stretch and stop on the front stretch and go? <clears throat> what what Bob, you would you would this would be the perfect person to ask. What is the do you have to in the wording of the rules, no. do you have to attempt to make the corner? <clears throat> Do you have to make tempt them? Do you have to like so if you if you like these guys like if you just went hauling ass down the back stretch like there's mm-hmm. no chicane but, but you right. can't though you can't because everyone's gonna they're out by the wall when they first oh yeah for down. sure but uh, you have to slow in down the a rules, little bit yeah but Does in it, the rules like it, it, can you because I think it's faster to blow no, the back stretch only at Indy. and stop on the front stretch only at Indy when they did that thing for turn one yeah. But I'm just saying, like, really, you well, because you're keeping your momentum and you're haul. You know. They're going through the chicane. You haul ass and blow by five of them. You, they're, you're going to gain a giant significant advantage and then have to just do a stop and go quick on the racetrack and then blow straight through that chicane, too, because you're stopping in the restart zone on the oval. You know, it's, I don't think it's faster. I, th- I think it might be close, but I think you'd gain. I don't know. We'll see. Somebody's going to do it know. eventually. Yeah. Let me ask you this. <laughs> yeah. If you're side by side through the last chicane for the win. Just knock the guy off. And you knock the guy out of the last chicane over between the sign and the curb where we went through, and you knock him over there. Do they penalize him for it? Should. What? Yeah. Because I got penalized for getting run exactly. over yesterday. What's the difference between you getting penalized? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, 
you shouldn't get penalized really for that. And like, so you just run the guy over there. He's automatically disqualified yeah. or because he has you ain't to stop. worry about him anymore. Nope. Are they going to call that? They should if they're going to be consistent. But do you think they would? Uh, I don't know. Two cars go through no, their side. I by doubt side. it. Then why? Then why is it a penalty? Yeah. Before. Why is it? Why are you penalized for something you didn't do? I don't know. Have to call our friend Mike Ford and ask him. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what happened with Jimmy and Truex racing for the win at the inaugural Roval? Like Jimmy. Yeah. Even though, or no, Jimmy spawned. Yeah, Truex. Jimmy wrecked but Truex still stopped because i think he knew he had to even though he was wrecked, wrecked. yeah yep. it's a it is what it is i just didn't i literally did not know that you could get a penalty for getting crashed <clears throat> with, through a chicane yeah <laughs> well on the sil- similar topic spot on spot off the cup series race resulted in five natural cautions an upgrade from the last two road course races and i know andrew has a Lovely clip, but oh, he's yeah. not ready. So we're going to skip. Hang on. Let's go back to Andrew in a minute. There's one caution yesterday that really drove me crazy. Oh, God. Which one? Andy <laughs> f***ing Lally, yeah. who is Long Island native. We try to stick together on the Long Island gang, but he wrecks. Are you voting him off the island? I'm, I'm voting, he's voting <laughs> off the island. He wrecks over there between one and two, facing the wrong way. So now he drives the wrong way from two to one. Makes a right, goes down pit road the wrong way, but which then, is fine because he got yeah. he got out of the way. Really so good I thought job. that was good. I'm like, oh, yeah. he's good. So then he stops. He try, he didn't go. I thought he was just going to drive straight down pit road to his pit stall. That's what I thought. Well, he does a U turn. Now he's heading back out towards the racetrack. Stops on pit road. Well, they don't throw the yellow. So he's sitting there for a couple minutes. And I told him, I said, we got one stalled on pit road. Then I see out of my the corner of my eye, he starts rolling. And I said, ah, never mind. They're not going to throw the yellow. He rolled again. All he did was roll to turn two where there was no wall protection and stop over there to draw yellow. What the f are you doing? Like, like yeah. you're irrelevant in this race, and now you're gonna draw a caution for for whatever reason. Like, what are you doing? I should have saved that for one idiot. That's uh, size to say. Freddie threw his one idiot. Still win it. It's not too late. But like that that caution, and uh, you know, we had one. Uh, you say natural cautions. One was because the forty seven burned to the ground. Um, yeah. You know, so it wasn't like there was one racing incident. But the the, the other thing was. There was cautions yesterday that I didn't think needed to be cautions. Like the 78 spun and the single card span in the middle of yeah, they three were rolling. Four. They got they, rolling. Yeah, and they were gonna th- they threw that one. Yeah. Suarez, I, they threw that one immediately. I know he had damage and was and, and probably warranted a caution later, but they threw that one immediately. Um, and, you know, there was just uh, all weekend, even the Xfinity race that the uh, the sign caution didn't need to be. I don't know. It was it was a, a tricky week to figure out what was a yellow and what wasn't. There, those very could easily just went and not been called all of them. What do you got, Andrew? You back I have the yet? clip. Oh, yeah. Good. Oh, and good. so I talked to Tyler Reddick on pit road uh, after the race, and there's actually a funny story that comes with it. Um, as I'm asking him a question that relates to this, you know, was it racetrack? Was it, you know, elimination race that made for more cautions? He asked me if I had my ED pills on me, but I didn't hear him. So I said, what? And he said, do you have your ED pills on you? And so I'm like, I, I still Why couldn't he hear him. I still couldn't hear him. So I'm like, yep, I do. And like around, like we were in this media scrum. And uh, and then I asked him the question. So then where? So so did wrote. he ask to borrow some or what? I mean, what's, uh, why, why was he asking? <laughs> Um, Why is all the reporters standing around looking at Andrew's crotch all of a sudden? <laughs> so I moved away from him. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, actually, Awkward. Tyler came to the roof for the Xfinity race. Yeah. He he was sitting there and I took my binoculars and I'm like looking right at him. He just like looks at me. He's like, I did a I did a promo for the track for, for the um live show and they we recorded before practice on the on the spotter stand, the oval spotter yeah. stand that I was up there during the race and, and he was standing next to me. He's like Wait a minute. <laughs> it's like you're in two places at once. Uh, so here's the clip, and I trimmed it down, but you can hear him asking me if I had my ED pills. Perfect. So kept that in. This race seemed to have a lot more natural cautions than the last two. You got your ED meds? <laughs> you got your ED meds on you? Yeah. Was that a problem? Yeah. Racetrack, uh, you know, elimination race. Like, what, what are your thoughts on that? Um, yeah, I think it's some of it's elimination race. Um, I, I mean, I don't know. I didn't honestly see the cautions, but I knew that drivers were being really aggressive. Um, guys not in the playoffs were being aggressive with playoff drivers, giving them something, you know, hey, you got something to lose. Um, the playoff, on the other side, the playoff drivers being aggressive back because they have a lot to, to gain and a lot on the line. So I think it's just a product if we get a caution late at road courses like this that they're just going to keep coming. 
This needs to be one of those things, a gift or a meme or whatever. You got your ED meds? <laughs> got your ED meds? Like, that was like funny. Where, why, how do you not pick and up then, on that? Well, and then so I edited that clip, but then I asked him the question, and then I looked to him for his answer. He's like, sorry, I wasn't paying attention. What was so like? He was, he was just thinking about the joke. It's hard to know what wants a caution and what doesn't. It exactly. is hard. Bob, before we jump out of spot on spot off, I want to know where you're at with all the silly season stuff. Is there much left to happen? <clears throat> Uh, you you got the ten, the sixteen. Who's in the ten? Ooh, it's a great question. It changes every few weeks. Uh, Is it we, AJ after this weekend? The, the 10. ten. Oh, just kidding. I mean, I will say it's not Eric Amarola. <laughs> I feel what? pretty good about that. Um, so, who do you think's in the ten as of this week? Can you tell us? I mean, I think Noah Gregson's certainly a, a candidate for it. Yeah. And, you know, he's, he's ha- he sounds like he's talked to s- several teams over the last month, and it sounds like some things have gotten close and then don't happen. And is that because other teams have started coming in or, you know, you know, are teams having second thoughts or are they still trying to figure out funding? I'm not sure which. So, yep. uh, But certainly he has become a candidate for that ride. Uh, as far as the 16, I don't know, you know, it's – after yesterday, you'd say, "Man, you, you you definitely would want to put Amundinger back in there," but it doesn't sound like that. That's that's necessarily their plan. Yeah, there's a there. You know, there's a lot of like one of the guys that intrigued me all off all silly season. Right? Bob, you can tell me where you stand on this is Riley Herbst. You, you hear, you know, we heard rumors of him going to JGR. Now I heard rumors yesterday of him staying at Stewart Haas. Then I saw a rumor of him going to Rick Ware in the Cup Series. Like, where, where, wow. what, do you, what do you think about Riley Herbst? Where he's going to land next year? Uh, again, that's one of those moving. And I think the last I heard is that he likely will stay. But you know, when somebody has the funding, that those things can, <laughs> yeah. can change pretty quickly. It's my understanding that he really wants to win in the Xfinity Series before he makes that move. And can he win? I think he can. I think, I think he's he, shown enough improvement. I think that this a, year, he was the most improved Xfinity driver that I for, for him. He had improved immensely at the beginning of this year. I think that I, I thought a perfect fit would be him going back to JGR because they need a driver with funding. They just lost Sammy Smith to JG, JRM, obviously. And the monster tie. Um, yeah, monster tie. Everything there kind of fits together. And I think that would have been his best opportunity to win because I think the JGR cars are superior to everybody right now in the Xfinity series. Um, but, you know, it, it is what, and it still might happen. I don't know. That was a rumor I heard months ago. And then that's what I talked about on here. Somebody leaving to go back to JGR was Riley. Um, but, you know, now you hear different rumors of, you know, potentially just staying at Stuart Haas, which, you know, I, I think he can obviously win. He's got the talent. The cars have speed. But, you know, I think that you could take a step up going to JGR and, and being a little more consistent over there. And then we lost. Brett. And Brett left. See you later, Brett. His take EV care. pills kicking in. His EV pill kicked in. He's got to run to the bathroom real quick. <laughs> what, what? Any other um, potential surprises for us as we head into the offseason? I think that Silly and you know, Bob can correct me if I'm wrong. Silly season right now just revolves around a couple drivers. You know, Noah Gragson being one of them. The Noah's, you know, he's – there you know he's well, and floating think, around and i think the question on noah is is it better for him to go and if he can get a cup ride to stay in cup where he's certainly had lost some confidence during this year but you know he he's proven what he can do in the xfinity series or is it better for him to go to the xfinity series win some races and kind of reestablish yeah. himself I, I, there, there's certainly a mix of thoughts in the garage on what he should do and, and and I'm not sure that there that there is a right answer. I would say, you know, if I mean JGR's obviously got open seats. There's a lot of there, nobody really knows what's going on over there Xfinity wise. I think they're gonna have one all star car and two full time guys and the full time guys could surprise a lot of people. Um but the you know if that's a place that that's the only place he can go now in the Xfinity series that has an opening where he can go and win because JRM's filled up, uh, RCR's filled up. You know, there's there's not that many, per, you know, Is weekly filled you up. You know, uh, colleagues not filled up, but I don't. I would put JGR a, a step ahead of colleague as far as just raw speed in the Xfinity series. He could win races at colleague for sure. Uh, we've seen Chandler do it. We see AJ do it. You know, we've seen that ten car win races. Um, but you know, it, like if you're going to step in somewhere and that colleague, I mean, he was at colleague last year, he ran that, the, the cup car part-time. So it's a natural fit there, but he kind of, I think he feel like he controls some of the options there. You know, you talk about if, if it's not Noah, 
Is it is it Cole Custer probably getting back in the ten or or maybe a surprise guy? Um, so it, it it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. But I think that it, you know it's starting to wind down for sure. After AJ's win and how emotional it was, I guess it kind of sparked a few rumors or questions as to what his plans are and. and I just know an AJ. I don't. I I don't think the whatever we're going to run next year, four or five road courses, whatever it is, he, that that's really his only chance to win next year. Um, you know, he. But there's a bunch of them. There, yeah, I'm saying there's five of them. But is that enough? Like for somebody like AJ, AJ can go back to Xfinity and be a championship contender tomorrow. Um, he's not going to be in my opinion, a championship contender in the cup series. So, and somebody at AJ's point in his career, like I think he would have enjoy life a lot more if he's just going out there running Xfinity schedule and, and, and being a championship contender in that series versus just hopefully I win one of these five road courses a year in the cup series. Let's move on to the DBC a main. I think um, Super Dirt Week is actually playing on Dirt Vision right now. Really? Yeah, they, they get out. rained out? Yeah, they're running all the features today, which mm-hmm. which will be over by the time Andrew gets done editing this. But, uh, <laughs> you know, yep. I, I see my buddy. Monday at 1045 Eastern. So Sur- Super Dirt Week playing as we're recording the show. Uh, yeah, so I saw Port Royal. So you, you always have like the, the big thing, obviously, up there and when you get to Pennsylvania is the Outlaws versus the Posse. And the Pennsylvania Posse, I should clarify. And uh, and here come the all-star drivers and, and the all-star circuit of champions drivers and steal the show. Uh, Tyler, Courtney, Sunshine won on uh, the one night, and then Zeb came back and won the next night. Uh, so good for them guys, two, two guys I know pretty well. And obviously Tyler is a buddy of mine. Zeb is a, a good kid, young kid. He's a really up-and-coming racer. Um, so good to see them guys have success at that track. Port. I yeah, love Port Royal. Royal. Yeah. What is it? The Palace of Speed or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. They said it's a, like uh, Hirschman lives up there. He went. He said it's like in the middle of a neighborhood. I've never been there. He said you're just oh, driving really? around, but it's like you're going by houses, 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 and there's a racetrack all of a sudden in the middle of it. <laughs> yeah. I like it because it's got the big walls in the yeah. corner. And then uh, earlier this year, a guy I know flipped out of the park there in turn one. So that was always. That's, what you, that's what you like about it? That's, that's what guy. I like about it. Yeah. <laughs> there, there was a point in, in the NASCAR <laughs> world where. Like the next big thing was the next big dirt racer. And obviously it's Tony Stewart, Casey Kane, the list goes on and on and on. Christopher Bell may be the last big one to come out and do it. Do you think with this new car that it's as important to have that dirt background? Well, I think that we, we talked about this last week that the dirt guy the the it's not as enticing anymore because of salaries, frankly. You know, like it used to be you could run dirt and make a living, but you could go to cup and make millions. I, you're not making millions now. I mean, there's. I'm sure Larson's making millions. Bell's probably making millions. But the, you get, now you have to get to the upper echelon of the Cup Series. You can't just get in the Cup Series. So, you know, you see a kid like Buddy Kofoid was a kid that was coming through the, the Toyota pipeline and was going to be the next Christopher Bell. Um, Is that a problem, Bob, that a dozen Cup drivers aren't making as much as Donnie Schatz? Um. Dude's like a twenty-four-time champion. I though, mean, man, should they? I mean, I. Okay, I Brad, think Brad Sweet. I, I, I mean, I think uh, I don't know that it's a problem that they're not making as much as Donnie Shots, but it's a problem that they're not making probably as much as you would think they should for putting their life on the line for thirty-eight weekends a year right. for the entertainment of millions of people watching on television. I, you know, I don't. Do you think uh, that? Do you think the fact that that dry or team owners have placed so many restrictions on? Dirt racers racing on dirt is also playing a factor because those guys who are coming no, up want to be able to race. No, I think what's a factor is that they get like three cents on the dollar for the T-shirts they sell when they can sell get 80 cents on the dollar for the T-shirts they sell out of the back of their truck at a dirt race. A chili bowl. Yeah. Yep. I mean, to me, and that's uh, – and I mean, heck, Kyle Larson even said when we talked about after his Talladega crash – uh, that, you know, you know, he was like, you know, people complain about me racing on dirt, but you know, look, I just got in this crash and it's like, I make a lot of money racing on dirt and not only probably from some winnings, but also from his merch. Yeah. I mean, that- and at that, and so that is, um, you know, I think that, I think that's as much a part of it as anything. You look at the dirt racing merchandise, right. And you see, a Bubba Wallace t-shirt. The Bubba Wallace t-shirt is the Bubba Wallace t-shirt for the year. You know, you go you go to Daytona, you buy a Bubba Wallace t-shirt. I mean, they come out with some different variations of it throughout the year. These dirt guys, they make a shirt for every event. 
you know, they, it, oh, we're going to Knoxville this week. We're going to Bristol. You know, they make a dirt. This is, oh, we're going to Port Royal. Like, whatever it is, you know, they, there's a shirt for almost for every event they go to. So that that's why you just mix. I mean, when we were we, with Couch Racer, we, we were using the same vendor as Kyle. And, you like, every week they're making another run of Kyle Larson shirts. Whatever, wherever they were going that week, they were making a run of shirts for that track. Um, so, you like, that's just you see like how much more they can sell over there and and to and that's that whole and you look at the dirt world like when you go to the racetrack every fan in there has a shirt of some either a racetrack or a driver or but it's 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 all merchandise based and they do a much better job of selling and, and promoting its stuff i feel like then and taking care of the driver the drivers take care of themselves on the dirt side but yeah you don't see as much as we used to do on the cup side that was blaine Deward, right blaine Deward. yeah he's oh. he's very good he is very good well, I know it'll be a busy week on Dirt Vision. We have Extreme Outlaws. Uh, we'll be going for the championship with Cannon and a few other drivers. And we also have a full weekend with World of Outlaws. So catch all those series and more, plus our show on Dirt Vision. Moving on to Reaction Theater. It snuck up on me. Jesus mm. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it. All right, here we go. Hey. I love Bob Pockris. He answers so many people's questions on Twitter, and no matter how many times they ask it. But I do have one question for you, Bob. Does the DBC studio have lights? <laughs> it has plenty of lights. We got these you boob guys, lights. Big, is what you call them? Boob lights. Yep. Those All are right. our boob lights. <laughs> I didn't want to say it, but if you get, if you say it, then... Um, They're Austin Power then, lights. Then, yeah. They, uh, remember the scene where the girl comes out with machine gun boobies? <laughs> Bob, we, uh, we got those free with when Brett bought his box of uh, front... <laughs> <laughs> take a picture of those <laughs> so we can share that later yeah so, yeah so that, and then there's other lights but they're turned off mm -hmm. so plenty of lights here at the uh, at the dbc studio <laughs> is that the most frequently asked question you get it is <laughs> it is it's I, people enjoy it so the the only the only issue i ever have with it is that sometimes when something's going on people like just fill my timeline with it then i don't see other people's kind yeah. of questions that Actually, you may really want to want, want, to, want to answer, but it's uh it's been a fun thing. Man, I tell you, I really didn't think I had a whole lot in common with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. before today, but man, anytime I get around searching up pizza rolls like that, the same fing thing happens to me every time. I never never do same honestly. What's he talking about? It was pretty funny. So Harris <laughs> Teeter was on the car and pizza rolls were on a bumper cover. And uh, so he's talking about the sponsor, the pizza rolls. It was they, on fire. They set him on fire. <laughs> yeah. I, I, my old boss, Eddie Partridge, he used to own uh, the team I modified, team I worked for, and then uh, he owned Ryan Priest's car forever. He Trev. owned a pear tree, too. He did. I, he <laughs> has a tree farm, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, but uh, he, he, uh, he passed away a couple of years ago. But he would be the only person on the planet. We, he would, we have a big camper. We'd bring all the races, and we would have a deep fryer, and you would deep, he would deep fry the Totino's pizza rolls. Yeah. And then I don't know about you, but like if I microwave deep fry, wherever you get them out, you got to like bite the corner off and then let them air out for about 37 minutes before you can. Ever, he would <laughs> pop them in his mouth. He would just one after another. I'm like, do you what is wrong with you? Yeah. Like, like, do you not have feeling in your mouth any longer? Like, what, what is going on? Because you, if you ever put one of those in your mouth, so did he own the camper yeah. that you woke up that time in the middle of the night? And you yes. wandered around. No, no, no. That was Don King. Oh, that. oh that's that right. Was, yeah, I thought yeah, that was the same yeah, guy. No, yeah. that was Don King. I peed in his camper. First day out. <laughs> Not in the toilet. Yeah. Not yeah. in the toilet. I was in the I garbage can. That. You heard about it, too? I think so. It was on, it was yeah. on this show. We yeah. Was it? When Doug was on. <clears throat> oh. Allegedly. Nobody has any proof. <laughs> you admitted it. I mean, yeah, I know. <laughs> that's kind of proof. <laughs> I got a message for you. One of the top three things in my life. Cold beer. Hot wings. Tim Dugger music, <laughs> yoga pants, and hanging out with Tim Dugger live here at Michael Walter's tap room. <laughs> I know. This is probably Brandon. Brandon's cool. <laughs> DJ's. Yeah. And Brett, and Brett stirs a lot of <laughs> 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 Come on. I got a phone call at probably midnight on, what night was that? Friday, I guess, when Duggar played. Yeah. Uh, it was Duggar FaceTiming me. And I was like, I saw it, and I was half asleep ready, so I was like, I'm not answering that. There's no way. <laughs> and then I got a video of these guys, and it was Duggar with some DBC fans, and they were partake. They, yeah. Brandon was the one that was at the show on Saturday. He said he was drinking water because he was out with Duggar the night before. So. Yeah, yeah. 
So, yeah. I Shout tell you, out. man, Michael's Tap Room, I didn't know uh, it was a thing in Concord yet, and I saw it. It's, it's where the old Quaker shots, Steak right? and Lube used to be, yeah. I think. Yeah. And yeah, uh, I'm is. definitely going to check it out because I'm a big fan of his place in Bristol. I've, so I've been there. It's actually it's a good, good place. Yeah. Nice inside. Yeah. You been, Bob? Yeah. yeah, I've been. Yeah. What's your requirement beer from what's as your, a Fox employee? What's your, as what's your beer choice? No, just kidding. There. You got a beer choice? <laughs> I mean, there's a two time something. Two right? time yeah. champ? Yeah. Something, yeah. Uh, two time. I winner. like the Mexican yeah. one the best, the old Mexican lager. It's my favorite. I, actually, I'm lying. I like the new orange one the best. I haven't had the new orange. It's one. bomb. It's good. Who the f thought it was a good idea to put Watkins Glen in the playoffs? <laughs> Give me one good f***ing cup race there that wasn't an oil-covered last lap race between Marcus Ambrose and Brad K. That track sucks and does not deserve in the B in playoffs. What the actual f*** was the end of that sentence? <laughs> That's the end of that sentence. <laughs> uh, thanks over, 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 over. Listen, I don't <laughs> hate this if we go to work. Here's the problem what I'm about to say. If we go to work and fix this road course package, I don't hate it. But if we go to work to pick this, fix this road course package, we're – and I know I was just saying I don't care about how much money – we're wasting teams' money. NASCAR should have their own R&D team. They have a ton of former drivers that are on staff, from Elton Sawyer to David Green, and I could keep going. They should, they should be developing these things. Why should teams have to carry the burden of developing the best road course package for this car? Bob, do you see what I'm saying? No. Yeah, but I think you want the – I don't know that – I mean, obviously NASCAR designed the car and they haven't gotten it perfect, which I guess might be too tall order whenever you design a race car. But, I mean, I think you want the team's help in, in, in trying to figure it out. I think the hardest part about this new car is that you know what, when it comes to safety or anything else, is that the teams can't touch the parts or pieces. They can't go to work on it. Yeah. So it's kind of up to NASCAR to say, okay, we're going to try this piece or we're going to try this or we're going to try that. Instead of the teams just going and trying to develop something and, and, and do it. So I wish they kind of would use, I don't know, you know, drivers. They can probably put any drivers in those cars and they can give them the feedback or several drivers in those cars. But I think it's more the, the 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 R and D element and having different ideas and and so, so many different people working on. So it. when the teams and drivers are outwardly publicly saying it's not the aerodynamics that need fixing, we need to go down the engine path. We need to go down this path. If they're not willing to do that, what's the point? I think the problem is you you're coming to the teams for help too late. You should the team should have been in the develop involved in the development of this car versus now trying to fix this car. You know, I mean, you see, like, I think that you go to, you know, you get a group of crew chiefs, take, you know, five guys, Rodney, who, you know, like there's guys out there, Gabe Hart, like you take five or five, four or five guys and include them in the development of the car. And they can tell you what's going to work, what's not going to work, what the pros and cons of certain parts are going to be. But now the problem is they developed this car and it has not been very good, except for maybe a mile and a half. And now it's on the teams to try to rectify the, the mistakes we've made with developing the car, where I think you could you could go a lot further if you just include these guys and they can tell you we have some of the smartest minds in the garage. They can tell you you're going down the wrong path with this. You're going down the wrong path. You know, don't do this or do this or, or more of this, whatever it is. But, you know, if, if the problem, I think, comes in, we've developed it. Now it's on you to fix it. Like, OK, well, that doesn't seem right. Hey, I just walked out of Big Al there, uh, Freddie and Brett, and you guys are in there. But I do have one question. Why the hell is Freddie's name on the wall in the men's bathroom? <laughs> it is. That's good for a friend. <laughs> Is your phone number under there, too? <laughs> I don't know, but I've seen it in there before. Was it under four it, you know, good time? It, it had well, to, did you write it? No. Did you put your name It had up to there? be a DVC fan because it's fucking spelt wrong. And I think they, <laughs> they, they do that stuff to piss me well, off. Well, with a C or with a, with a Y? With a y. y There's not, thank God it's not my full name. It's just okay. Freddie, but it's with a, with a Y. So it's somebody, it has to be a DB or Brett, Brett <laughs> probably doing it. Piss I, don't, me off. I never have a Sharpie. That's not that. 100% not me. <laughs> there is a, there, it's funny because there is Freddie's in there and there's a, a Couch Racer logo in the. In the <laughs> In the bathroom. <laughs> Which side? Is the it, right side? The uh, left side. side. The one you don't ever go with. I thought it was going to be like in the urinal. It is in the oh, urinal. Wait, you <laughs> got a certain. It's, it's, it is. It's you got a certain. When you're at the you urinal, when you're, at the urinal right you're, looking, you're looking at that. But what? it's not on the porcelain. Not There's on two the bathrooms. bathrooms. <laughs> There's a right side bathroom and a left side bathroom. On completely opposite sides of the restaurant. Oh. I always sit on the right side. Gotcha. Sit on the right side. 
<laughs> in the bathroom? <laughs> in the bathroom, yes. I've never been. So staring yeah. at Freddie's name. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's on the left side. All right, we got one more. Hey, I just want to give a massive shout out to Freddie for calling me Jesus. <gasps> uh, if you want to get blessed, just hit me up anytime, baby. <laughs> what did you call him? Jesus. <laughs> He oh, was the, the guy, guy you, the call, you called him Jesus. Called you him Jesus. did, yes. Yeah. Uh, he, if I'm going to get blessed. He, he really wanted to have a drink, so he bought me a beer before we left the show the other day, and I, I appreciate that very much. <laughs> As if you needed any more. Yeah, just what I needed. I mean, I don't know what Jesus really looked like, but if you take the painting that everybody has up of Jesus, the guy looked like <laughs> Jesus. There's two of them. There's two guys in the front of yeah. just like Jesus. There were well, two actually, Jesus there was just one. You just had so many beers. <laughs> <laughs> that could be be one Shout out to Charlotte Motor Speedway for dropping off a cooler full of beer, by the way. I appreciate that. Yeah, that was awesome. Someone drank my beer. That was me. <laughs> and a few more. Oh, send us an audio message 24-7. Call our number 704-802-9572, and we will keep playing the best ones. Uh, let's move on to Ask DBC. Don't forget to send us your questions on Twitter using hashtag Ask DBC. The first one is from our friend Master of Light. This one is for Bob. I'm curious who was your inspiration to become a journalist and why and how much of an impact did that person have on you for who you are today? Well, that was a hmm. seven-part question. <laughs> I like it. Um, I mean, I would say... You know, my older brother was a got was in newspapers. Uh, he was about four years older, so he started working at a newspaper when I just started college. So I would say he was probably the you know probably the biggest inspiration. Um, I lived in the Midwest at the time in Indianapolis. I would say if you're talking about like just people who I read, probably Mike Royko of the Chicago Tribune was a columnist that you know you, you read, and uh, and then maybe as he got older, maybe Mitch Album. So looking back, when I met you for the first time, you were at the Daytona Beach Journal. Did you think you would end up working for Fox Sports in a role <laughs> that puts you obviously in a national big big media, you know, perspective, but but on TV? Like you're a TV no, guy now. I didn't think that at all. You know, um I mean there's there were so many different paths that you could take. And you know, when NASCAR scene had their opening in two thousand three, the magazine at first, I didn't even think I would apply because I didn't think that writing once a week was gonna or was gonna fill kind of my juices as far as disseminating information. But you know, I was told, you know, this is a good place you need to apply, and so that's kind of where that started the NASCAR centric path for me. So yeah, and never, never thought about TV or anything. You know, I thought if I was gonna be on TV, it'd be like as a you know kind of the, the local reporter columnist who's on a on a news show maybe once a week or something like that not uh not certainly not on not on fox and you know quite frankly when you know espn said they weren't gonna have motorsports reporter anymore after was it 2019 or 2018 i would say there's probably a january 1 of that 2019 probably 30 percent chance i'd end up in at daytona covering NASCAR. I had contracts from a lot of gambling sites, at least a couple of gambling sites that wanted reporters. Right. And, you know, and that kind of looked like the path that was going to go down. And then Fox came up with a role for me that totally couldn't refuse and kept me in the sport. I love it. Um, I got to say, man, you talk about the NASCAR scene. I remember we'd all be standing in the haulers and they they deliver those things. And the crew guys, we'd all dive into those things I mean, it was the number one publication from an industry perspective. I don't know how well it did outside of the sport, but it did. The, the incredible thing about that magazine is, you know, you think about like the early two thousands when NASCAR was just starting to, you know, when NASCAR was booming, but the internet wasn't totally there yet. You'd go out to like races at Phoenix, and people be like, "This is the only way we get our NASCAR information," uh, because the, the local papers weren't really covering it, right. and the, the magazine would go to press on Monday nights. And so people would get in the in their mailbox, hopefully Thursday or Friday before the next race weekend. So so you, they were getting pretty much up to date news for uh, you know for a lot of them. Up you're to, not writing as date. much now. That's right? four days late. You're not. You're not. Well, yeah, I mean it's be an hour late. Or it'd yeah. be, 
not you're, four you're not days. Right. That's we don't talk about days late. We talk yeah. about uh, hours. Hours. Yeah. So that's ninety six hours late. Yeah, I always hate like when they put out that um, what they just put out on a Sunday, a day off. It was a press release about oh, it was about the clash. Clash. And I was like, the reporters are off today. Like, let them have a day off. Why drop this on a Sunday? Um, but, well, but because it was part of the football. Play. It, yeah, it was, it was during the football game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you, you were talking about uh, going from, you know, obviously writing to, to Fox Sports. You don't do as much writing now. Do you miss no, it? No, uh, a little bit. But, I mean, now for the Fox Sports website, I write virtually three, at least three times a week. So that's certainly enough. I'm, I'm certainly totally busy. <laughs> um, and, you know, and just – it's just different for like the the business with Bob that we do every uh, week on uh, on NASCAR race day. I got, it's pretty much I write like a you would like a news notebook for that you used to write for a newspaper, and that I write that and send it to the producers, and then they tell me which topics we're gonna we're gonna talk about. So right. you're, you're you're doing some of the same things. I'm getting to write these long you kids don't know features that we're doing on Fox Sports digital you know the, these 10 minute pieces so you're getting to do different things yeah than used to i'd probably not as many you know necessarily deep dive written pieces specifically for kind of quote unquote print reading you having as much fun as you've ever had um that's a great question <laughs> <laughs> i think you know the, the sport certainly has evolved right and and so um i think with this playoff system it really creates a lot of pressure it creates a lot of angst and uh, so you know so i think sometimes there's there's more drama which can be fun to cover but it also can be um uh you know it, it can be stressful and 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 so uh, i don't know it, it certainly is intriguing to cover. I don't know when, when you talk about fun. I think it's well. You it's, also it's just it's just different. It's just different, and the people are different, and it's uh, just a totally different atmosphere. I would say than thirty years ago. Your your role too, being more on camera. I know you were you did some Arca stuff a few weeks ago, and which you did an incredible job of. Is is that where you would like to continue? <laughs> um, no, I. I mean, I'll do whatever Fox asks, but that, that, that doing the pit road on that Arca race, it was fun. What, what happened was, you know, I see a schedule because they, I, I saw a schedule and saw, saw we were short person for that, uh, for that Arca race. It was a couple months before and I said, Hey, can I do it? And we prepared, like I followed the Arca, the, the um, Heather Debo around and, and, st and was in the Arca garage all day uh, for a day at Pocono for a day at Michigan. So that we really prepared for it. I, I thought I could help give some stories for the telecast, which got number one goal. And then, uh, you know, as I said, you, you want to put yourself in new positions. So I thought that was good. And hopefully um, I, I, I joke that the next time, maybe if we're shorthanded or something comes up and the choices are nobody or Bob, you know, <laughs> that, uh, Please we'll go Bob. That, that Bob. But, you know, I, I also told our people that, like, if we found out that that wasn't part of my skill set or wasn't something I could do, then that was a good thing to know, too, because then there wouldn't be the urge if somebody did get sick or, or you know, there was some question, you know, if somebody said, well, well, let's try it and then have me fall flat on my face. Yeah. Plug and play, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> How many? So Bob is very active on Twitter. I don't know if you're aware of that or not. I, I, I hadn't. Noticed. So if you, if I told you, Brett, that you have sent out sixty-seven thousand tweets, and you're a very active person on yes. Twitter, also, uh, how many tweets do you think Bob has sent out? Quarter million. Just short. At this, like two hundred and twenty-three thousand. <laughs> so he'll fix that today. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, but by the end of the week, he'll have two fifty. So. <laughs> do you? Uh, do you miss living in North Carolina at all? Obviously, you're in Harlem now. <laughs> yeah, um, a little bit sometimes. I mean, there's certainly pluses and minuses, but I, I love uh, living in New York City. It's just such a, a vibrant. Um, it's just there's just no place like it, and it's it's, it's not for everybody. It's not for me. No, 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 for, no, no, no. But no, no. Uh, I just I, you know, I'm I'm I I can't. It's hard to describe the feeling. And part of it was, you know, I. Was born in New Jersey, grew up, you know, maybe 20, 30 miles from New York City. Didn't necessarily go in and see a lot. You know, I moved when I was 10. But there's just something very comforting and something that's like speaks like it's it's home. Yeah. And uh, and, you know, I've 
I, 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 I enjoy it. How many more years does Bob Pockers train roll in the NASCAR? Does it stick around? How long? <laughs> I, I don't think Bob Pockers gets that choice. I think usually it's uh, usually that's a choice. Somebody made. makes that decision. Somebody for makes you. that decision well, I think uh, that for you. So I am. Um, I, I I don't know. I don't know. It's um, it's a uh, it's a great question. Um, you know, I think there's the question is, you know, do you, do you keep going every week and, and doing the same role, or eventually are there different roles that maybe you can transition to, and what would those be, and would you be as effective? Last in, question. In those I'll roles? Shut up. Would you ever consider going to work for a team? Oh. That, um, I mean, consider, I think you consider everything, um, but that would probably be pretty difficult, I think, to If you were offered the, the director of communications or vice president of communications for a Cup Series team, would you, would you do it? Uh, probably not. Probably not. I, the, the hard part is, is I'm, I, I just, that doesn't fit, fit my personality. Yeah. You know, I, th I think I, I don't I think I could do the job, but I don't think I would enjoy doing yeah. the job. The, the, the job, the journalism of this job is what I love. People's discretionary time and their discretionary income is limited. And if I can have an impact by what I write on them deciding whether they're going to go to a race or whether they're going to root for this person or whether they're going to spend their money buying this driver's T-shirt, that that that's what drives me. Well, last question. Do you have any regrets about running into D Brett and I in a Dover casino? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. Casino not, Bob um, is probably no, my favorite Bob. No, because, um, I mean, the, the thing is, is that uh, I, I, I'm, I, I, I can handle myself in the sense, like, I know when where the limit is. Are you saying we don't? Uh. But what, I'm, what I'm saying is that I can't uh, – I, I, what I'm saying is that I will say no when once I feel like I've hit the the the, the part of the night where I need to need what, to which stop. story was your favorite, Freddie? The Hickey story or the one about losing his glasses? The glasses uh, for sure. <laughs> We're gonna bring those up again. Can we tell a glasses story on here? I think you, you already did. did oh, the first did. time. You yeah. I, I, mean, I thought Freddie wasn't here then. You I wasn't. I, I haven't told heard the story. Well, right. yeah. Can we retell it real fast? <laughs> <laughs> you love that story, <laughs> don't it's you? It's my favorite That's story. <laughs> Andrew, do you know the story? I was just saying, I haven't See, heard we got it. a lot of new oh, listeners. Oh, my gosh. So, <laughs> I mean. Oh, I love God, to you, see it. you guys love this story, but it's a simple story. I was at a friend's house. I got up the next morning. I uh, She lived about 25 miles from where I worked and where I lived, and I you know, you get up in the morning and you're kind of groggy. So you just kind of <laughs> like go like this and looking for your get, pills, get, get, in a, get, get in the car. <laughs> and I start driving and about 20 miles down the road, the, the signs are still kind of blurry. And I'm like wondering why, because I should be awake. And I look in the rearview mirror and I have her glasses on. <laughs> so I have to drive all the way home or all the way to her place to uh, to get my to get my glasses. What back. an idiot. What an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. I think the Hickey story is just as good. Uh, this next one is from Katie. What's Bob's favorite track and how many miles has Bob flown? Oh, I have no idea how many I've flown. I certainly have. I'm sure. Are you a million miler? What What do you fly to New York? I fly Delta now. Yeah. Don't. Uh, so good. Good. What left you. from Lucky American you. from being in Charlotte to Delta? So I don't have like million miler status since I yeah. changed. Probably would if I did, but or if I didn't. Uh, favorite track. I mean, I grew up in Indianapolis, so I think you know that's. I, I joke that I didn't even know that. Like I figured Daytona had stands on the inside. Because uh, you grow up in Indianapolis, that's what and that, you have. That, that's what you know. Yeah. And so, to me, that's that's still kind of my favorite place. It's it's where I went to a race when I was uh, ten or eleven, and went you know every year, um, you know, when I was in college and stuff, and where I start, first started doing motorsports journalism was there. So um, I don't, you know, so that that to me is my favorite track. If you're asking a favorite NASCAR track, like where to watch. Rockingham was my, I, I just loved watching the car slide off a of turn four and come down that front stretch. Are you happy talking about Indianapolis? Are you happy we're going back to oh. the racing? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, when they, when they started the Brickyard, 
I mean, I was at that first brickyard in 94. Like the, the whole point was so that, you know, if a NASCAR driver was like on a plane and somebody said, well, do you race Indianapolis? He would answer yes. And it, it wasn't yes, but the road course that, you know, <laughs> yeah. that, that wasn't right. <laughs> that that answer doesn't have the same impact or the same. I, I think if you're going to race Indianapolis, the oval is the place to race. Okay. I agree with you. What about the little track there? What do you think about it? But the Indian. IRP. Oh, IRP. Lucas Oil Raceway Park. They renamed that thing. <laughs> I can't keep up. Um, I mean, I like it. I mean, it's been a, it's it's where you've seen some great, um, great Xfinity races or Bush races back in the day, and I think uh, I like that the trucks are there. Kind of wish Xfinity was there. Um, you know, I, it's kind of frustrating that it, there weren't races there. Man, what an Xfinity for a race while. that would be. Like that would uh, oh, be a phenomenal. That, oh, that, my that, God. I mean, it's, it's so good. And 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 the question is why why don't they have one? Is it because they they can't afford the sanction fee with the sponsorship that they can get? And if that's the case, then should NASCAR lower that fee just to have that type of event? Can they justify that while charging others? Um, and I do know that going to Indianapolis Motor Speedway, it's easier for the teams to get sponsorship for that race versus IRP. It's easier for them to entertain guests than at IRP. But why can't you do both? Like, yeah. like why can't, you know, during, um, during, you know, during Indy 500 qualifying weekend, I don't even think Xfinity races, right? Um, if, if it's during uh, the All-Star yeah. weekend, why can't Xfinity go there and race, race that weekend or some, something like that? Where, where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. Now, for those fans who are listening, you've been to every single track and more. What uh, what track would you recommend as being their bucket list for going to? Hmm. It's it's so difficult because you don't know what that person likes. But I would still say the Bristol Night Race is a race that if you if you have one to go to, just because the atmosphere is so good that. Uh, that you know that there's just nothing quite like that event daytona 500 bristol night race two best things on our schedule from a experiential standpoint yeah moving on to what an idiot who would like to start i can start go for it so i hate to have to do this um, but i have to call out one of our fans um rj I, we met at Big Al's last night, I know he, and they were making an entire DBC trip of their weekend. They did a live show. They were coming to Big Al's. So after telling me that, I handed RJ my phone, and it said, type your number in here, and I was gonna, I invited him to come sit in. We have some fans here. Nell, our fa one of our favorites, she comes to every damn event we do. I don't know what, how God she does it. I don't know how she does it. But uh, So I was going to invite them to come sit in on the recording this morning, and I think that RJ – typed his number in incorrectly <laughs> because when I invited him, the text didn't go through and I sent him a picture of where to park and that didn't go through. So RJ, unfortunately we were trying to have you come listen in today, but I think you gave me the wrong phone number. Mm -hmm. So I, apo I apologize, but you were going to have to be my wood idiot this week. Ooh, Brett, who you got? <sighs> There's a long list, but I'm going to, I'm going to narrow it down. I thought Crafton's fine was, too large but that's not the idiot part of it for me i mean i think to find 25 grand for a punch that i freddie said on here last year about the bubba thing or whatever that was how unprecedented that was to me this is the most unprecedented punch fine in nascar history but that's actually not why i'm going to say what an idiot the fact that you find them the amount that you did is literally telling these drivers, don't handle it yourself. Don't handle it in the garage. Don't handle it on pit road. Because now you've set a precedent. You're saying go wreck each other and tear up each other's race cars and put that on your crew guys and on your owner. And for that reason, whoever decided the fine should be that catastrophic, you win my what an idiot. Can we give an honorable what an idiot to Chandler? What did he do? Not wear his head sock. Ten grand <laughs> for not wearing your head sock. So when I when I came out, I literally I texted him. I'm like, dude, ten grand head sock? Is that hard? He said, it was sweaty. It was one lap, and I didn't think it was a big deal. They saw it on camera. Obviously, it's safety. I'm an idiot. It's ten grand. What idiot? Wow, <laughs> ten grand for not wearing a head sock during qualifying. He had Man, just that, got. He had just got. So he agreed to go race this truck, right? 
And obviously, you can make a little bit of money racing a truck. Not and then he turns around and gets fined ten grand, which means he lost money racing the truck because the reason the headset was Whoa. sweaty is because he had been in the truck. I thought it was for his cup. Was no, it? it was truck. Was it truck? It was truck qualifying. Wow. Yeah. Good lord. <laughs> I can't even fathom that. That's an idiot. That, I didn't even know. I, gosh. All right. Good job, Chandler. You can be my idiot too. <laughs> I mean, that's bad. You're going to piggy back off of somebody else's idiot. He ain't going to pick an idiot. He's not picking Landon idiot. Huffman's still mad at him. <laughs> I think Landon Huffman's mad at a lot of people right now. I don't think it's me. <laughs> Bob, do you have a wooden idiot? I had one, but I mean, I'm, I was one of those who thought Crafton should be suspended for breaking a guy's nose when he was in street clothes and the <laughs> guy was in the playoffs and Crafton wasn't. And I mean, if, he hurt, if he hurts that guy, he has trouble breathing, then... Crafton's teammates advance, but not that Crafton's going to stand up for his teammates. You know, <laughs> Crafton's certainly <laughs> standing up for himself. But um, yeah, but I'll, I'll so go. You're with saying my, Brett's one idiot. I, I'm I'm a little bit questioning that now uh, on on that that uh, that he feels that 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 was just like your normal well Brett's, pit road Brett's scuffle. been punched in the face enough that he <laughs> he, he, he sides with the guy doing the punching. No. But <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm actually going to go. Um, with the the NASCAR industry and oh God. this, from what I saw on Friday night before Tim Duggar played, whereas I saw all the Joe Gibbs Racing drivers signing autographs at the racetrack at the Toyota display, and a huge line of people to go see their favorite driver, and that's really easy to do in Charlotte when most of your drivers live in the area. And when NASCAR went to this schedule of a lot of just Saturday, Sunday shows, they said, we're going to have our drivers out in market on Fridays. They're going to be doing things on Fridays at the track or, or somewhere in the, in the city. And that, yeah, there's some that, that might do one uh, that do an appearance, a sponsor appearance. But if you can do that at Charlotte, you need to find a way to do it every weekend for the people who are camping at the track to enhance that experience. And it may, it may cause, it may result in writing a check. But there's got to be a way that, you know, that maybe every every organization has to pick three tracks where they their drivers have to go in on Friday and 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 get on a get on stage or be on a fan zone or something and do a, a huge autograph session because that there needs to be something for those people in market on Fridays when there's nothing on the racetrack. That's absolutely You're correct. as spot on as anything I've ever heard. I mean, we grew up in the in the air, Bob, where Cup drivers were doing 60-plus appearances a year. Some of those at the track, some of those in store, some of those flying out of market to do them. And what that does is that takes our NASCAR experience to the marketplace. And now we're not as big of an event as we used to be. On the weekends, we're a two-day show instead of a four-day show. So, again, I think Bob needs to go work somewhere that, that he can be used, Freddie. I think he's the next NASCAR president. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> What an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I would agree to some extent, but I, I think on the autograph session and just the time standpoint, it, it's valid because if you look at look back on how drivers were used with sponsors, it's changed so much. And I think it has to do with some of the restrictions that when autograph lines are well run, you can sign five hundred in an hour. It's a lot of people. You, you know, through. um, I did forget about something. Uh oh. I could give away an idiot. idiot. I can give it out. Um. Yeah, one of us showed up late for a birthday party. Oh, seriously, I miss <laughs> Casey Boat, late surprise. I wasn't gonna say that. Just a couple minutes late, right? Yeah, no, yeah, uh, a couple. Sixty, at probably at least. Yeah, seventy-five. <laughs> and that ballpark. <laughs> that is not my fault. Casey, that's not record. late. At that point, you should just stay home. Yeah. Oh, I that's thought about it. I felt late. bad, but I texted. I made sure that they knew. Chloe fell asleep late. I right. don't know what to tell you. I was now ready. We're blaming the kid. Oh, I was. I thought. I thought for sure nobody's Chloe's gonna not know here about to defend it. Herself. And nobody was gonna know about it. I pull in. I like, like try and like <laughs> sneak into the party. And then I look at TJ, and TJ is like, TJ is holding oh. a sign up. Says, "Where's Casey?" Yep, yep. <laughs> TJ, Jonathan was there. Dale. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I apologize. TJ just has to remind me. Oh yeah. Sorry, I have a kid who apparently likes Casey. Sleep. Everyone there had a kid. <laughs> Touche. I, no <laughs> I, I have no words. That's a bad example. That was a terrible. A kid that excuse. slept late. I'm sorry. <laughs> Some people have trying. more than one kid that were there. Yeah, they made it on time. 
<laughs> okay. Bob, I'm before sorry. we dive into DBC picks, I don't want you to tell us who you think is going to win yet because you'll do. screw it up. Um, your top five picks yesterday, AJ Amendinger won the race. Yeah. Yeah. How about that? How Matt about Custer that? in the Xfinity race. How about he that? finished second. So what, what goes into that and when do you decide? <laughs> when do you decide you're going to? So I do them usually the night before. So you sit. literally sit down and do your research the night before. Yeah. And well, and uh, usually do it as I watch a replay for cup. I'll watch the replay of practice and qualifying. Cause usually we're talking to drivers and stuff during that time. So I don't have a really good sense of exactly what happened. Right. Um, and then I'll, you know, I can look at some stats if I, you know, especially if it's a if it's a track that uh, I want, I feel like that past performance is going to be key. How many um, have you got right in the Cup Series? Oh, show? I don't know. I think I've got like four, maybe. Wow. I don't know. It's Three pretty or good. Four, four out of what? Twenty nine. Four out of thirty. Thirty. Thirty five. I don't know. I do it. Uh, I mean, I'll be real honest. That just so many people who play fantasy or gamble or. Um, whatever they, I get a lot of questions like, who's your pick? Who's your pick? Or who's your, you know, what do you think about this driver for that driver? So I just decided at 8 a.m. every race day, I'm going to have a tweet scheduled and people know that they can go look at it. And if they want to use it for their fantasy team or anything more then that's, uh, they can take that risk. TJ and I have two wins each during the playoff. I think TJ, we should just kick these other two out. You and I reset at zero for these last well, four weeks. What honestly, they're both they are both eliminated from winning, but yeah. they can still beat you. I just got to be not be last. Yeah, gotta get out of last. So I don't yeah. go buy dinner. So y'all need to pick crappy for me to even have a chance to you, catch him. And honestly, no, no, let's I be honest. I got to win. So let's I be can, honest. You got to win the next four races. What sucks is if I had just won one last year, I'd have won the whole thing. Now I've won two in the playoffs. Yeah, but anyway, that, 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 who's a, first? A lot, lot going on there. I'm first. I will take Willie B. Damn it. Uh, Damn it. Let me go back to the drawing board. Damn here. it. Oh. Oh, I'll take Blaney. Oh, yeah. Brett screwed. <laughs> We're going Who's to Vegas. Me? Yeah, I'll take Bell. TJ. That's who I was going to take. Was Bell. Actually, no, no, you can't. No, I can't. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> Damn, I forgot. You caught it. Go ahead. Uh, I don't know why. I must have been looking at your list. I was. Yeah. The funny thing is, a guy that we all want to take, we've all already took. <laughs> I know. I, this, we've uh, all already used up Hamlin. Yeah, I would have. Uh, and at the mile and a half, he's been lights out. Well, I'm going to take Christopher Bell, Andrew, while TJ figures yeah, I out can't pick him. who he wants because I can pick him and he can't. All out. All out. I will take – oh, it's, I mean, I'm shooting for the fence right here right now. Martin Truex, Jr., well, he's been on fire. He's been on fire. That's a good pick. <laughs> I'm changing pick. his luck. Good job, Casey. I'm changing That's his like, luck. Bob, who are you thinking? Who are you, who are you taking? You can take whoever. At uh, Vegas this weekend? Yeah, yeah. We're rolling the dice. I am going to Hamlin go or Logano. That's his What What did you say? Hamlin, uh, mm. Byron, or Logano. You need a list out. in case you don't know all the names? No, I know the names. Oh, I know. Um, uh, some reason I'm just I'm trying to think of – of the last few races there, um, I I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with Larson. Larson, Solid. which means you're saying that you think the groove's gonna widen out, one or two for sure, right? I just think he he got through this round. I think he got over what could have been for a second straight year very you know guilt ridden performance. He's gonna go to Indy on Thursday and get in an Indy car. And do his rookie orientation program. He's going to be just kind of on a, just be so happy and so confident that I think he'll get it done. Yeah. What if the IndyCar test doesn't go good? You changing your pick? <laughs> hey, I picked him. I'll stick with it. What's the orientation <laughs> consist of for our fans? That are uh, I think that are- you, you go like, uh, you, I, I don't know where they start, but you have to do like five or 10 laps or 15 laps at like 210. Then you go five, 10 or 15 at 215. Just like Arca. Then 220. And then I think you have to do maybe 20 laps or 30 laps at like 220 or 225 or 230. But they, they do them in increments. And but if so, he goes out there and just bust off 230 right off the bat, then I, 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 you, you, you can't, right? You, yeah, you can't. You have to start out at yeah at that kind so of slower pace. So it is pace. complete opposite of, <laughs> of like Arca or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think should happen in Vegas, Bob? Well, I think it's going to happen. I think it's going to be a pretty traditional mile and a half race. I don't see a lot of. Uh, I think it's. 
Yeah, I, I think it'll be kind of pre- pretty straight up, pretty like a lot of the mile and a half we we've seen this year. And I don't think there's going to be too many nothing crazy, too many surprises. Um, and that's why I was, the only surprise was the Casey Pick and Blaney <laughs> because he's what? a Ford. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you mean? He's surprised you picked a Ford. <clears throat> But Bob, Bob just had a second one idiot. Don't worry. No, Logano, no. But Logano, like honestly, like Logano has done really well at this track, and that's a Ford. Yeah, but just not re- just this year on the intermediate track. Don't worry, Casey. We humbled Freddie too. That you what know that I'm just I'm not sold that they're going to be that strong. So does Ford have a new nose coming next year? Yeah, but Ford and Toyota have uh, new bodies next year. Why would Toyota want a new body? You think? Uh, the the Camry yeah. was redesigned, correct? So they, they street car. Yeah, so they're they're just going to look more like the street car. Chevy had the option to, but did not because they're still supposedly trying to figure out what brand they're going to rebrand to. Because the Camaro, because the Camaro is being discontinued, right? right? So for the most part, so uh, and they can continue run the Camaro for I've heard for at least a few years, if not more. But obviously, it doesn't really make a lot. It makes of, no sense. It makes to have no sense. That, yeah, it's not in street production. So. So they opted to, and plus, obviously, they're around well. <laughs> where, where does Bob stay on the strip in Vegas? Um, well, wherever wherever I get put by the company. So where are you typically at? Um, We're gonna stalk man, you. I've been I've been all over. I've been all over. But what's your uh, favorite property? You my favorite property. Ooh. Um, my favorite property in Vegas. He's got a shitty I, grin on his face. Well, he he's, he's, a, like he's lost his glasses. If, 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 I'm, <laughs> if I'm, if it's my money, I'm probably staying at like Treasure Island because it's central. <laughs> but it's you, not your money. It, it, you can move around. If if it's not my money, um, I mean, gosh, you stay at the Encore and it's pretty nice. If Bob shows up wearing a turtleneck this weekend, we're going to know that he's <laughs> so, in the Encore. So, Bob, Bob, does that mean, do you go like out at night in Vegas? Can we find so, you out if um, we go out after our your business, show? Casey. Don't worry about it. Yeah, don't worry about it. No, I mm. want to party with Bob. Uh, you Are you coming to, yeah, come to the Westgate on Friday? I don't, I don't know the, what, Xfinity, quali- or Xfinity practice and qualifying that night. Yeah, it ends, about track, 5, ends at 5.30. And I just don't know whether I'm going to go over to the ARCA West race. Or not. So. Yeah, I could promise you we'll be more entertaining. Uh, I, I would uh, <laughs> think that uh, I would think definitely that your show would be uh, would so be one I, to I see. Did, when I went to do the site check at Westgate, I was literally like, "There's Elvis stuff everywhere." Mm-hmm. So we had a call last week with Mike Davis and his team, and I brought it up on the call, and I'm like, "Man, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's going to be Elvis stuff everywhere." So Freddie started doing some digging, and he comes back and he's like, "This is where Elvis did." Like a long residency, he and lived that he had the the whole top floor. How many square feet you said? It so, is? Somebody said like fifteen thousand. <laughs> so Freddie's like, we got to do a tour of the of the Elvis Suite. I'm like, why don't we just rent? We just it? stay there. Yeah. <laughs> why would we tour it? <laughs> you think there's hadn't been any fun having that suite? Nah, I doubt it. So anyway, we're excited to go to Vegas. It'll so are you staying week. in the suite? Did you no, get it? I am at a Resorts World for a couple nights, and then I am staying at Westgate, but I got to talk to him about that suite because I didn't know there was such thing. Yeah, we have to find out. I think it might be a little bit of a cost I think, associated. I think I should get that, if anything. I, I put up with y'all. They don't want to clean it up. Where do you stay, Casey? <laughs> I don't know. Where am I staying, Andrew? <laughs> uh, the Luxor. Was it, was it the I Luxor? bet you're at Mandalay Bay. Uh-uh, I bet, Cosmo. I bet Ooh, Cosmo. 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 I, I support South Point. that. She'll be at South Point. We're at Cosmo. Well, actually. they were originally one time at that pyramid place, and yep. I got them out of there, thanks to KJ. So now they have you out at the Cosmo. Yeah. Wow. That's good. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> well. <laughs> Cosmo's fun. It's young. It's good. Um, it's a lot, a lot how much of stuff money there. are you taking to Vegas, Casey? Be honest. Or you just take the credit card. How much, Chad Chad? How much of Chad's <laughs> money are you taking? It depends on. Uh, you gamble? I have not. I need to learn. So this might be a lesson that we have this week. Every time we teach somebody how to gamble, we lose and they win. So, yes. so. let's plan on that Thursday night. Who is it? William? William Byron. Cost me like two grand to have him win 500. <laughs> I'm like, listen, I sat down with Clint the first time. That's a mistake. And he borrowed $2,000 from Elliot. And he sat down and, and he's playing $25 a hand. And I'm like, Clint, $25? Like, really? <laughs> Freaking guy wins thirty thousand dollars. Thirty thousand. Thirty thousand dollars. The first time we'd all play blackjack. Did he show up at the track and, the next day? Yes, he did. Okay. And I lost my ass teaching him how to play blackjack. So Thursday night, you guys are going to teach. Yeah, him I want to so get win. in on this program. Yeah. <laughs> For me and Freddie sat down. This was about three or four years ago, 
And I was actually getting strep throat, and I didn't know it. And we walk into the casino, and he and, and he had been up and down. I had oh, been God. mostly up. And he's like, what do you want to play? And I was like, I don't care. What do you want to play? He's like, three-card poker. And I'm like, perfect. Well, three-card poker, your play doesn't influence the rest of the table. You're only playing your hand. So – I buy in Pair Plus. I buy in Ante and all that stuff. He sits in my seat. He sits right next to me. He sits so the way, you know, I was sitting in the second seat. And I had been telling him, like, we were playing blackjack, and I was losing my ass. I was like, I'm done playing blackjack. I'm just going to go sit and play three-card poker for a while. It's not there's, – there's no skill to it whatsoever. You just sit there and lose money usually. <laughs> so he's play, he stayed playing blackjack, and I was sitting there, and he comes over and takes the number one seat. So now – He's got my hand that I would have had if the, if he didn't sit oh, down. Man. And the first fucking hand. I look at him and I go, you ain't going to believe this. <laughs> is a straight flush. <laughs> and he, I don't even know how much money he won. but 3500 bucks. And I, I gave to, Freddie all the money back that he was down for the night. I'm that nice little friend. That's a good guy. But you're an <laughs> ass. Because <laughs> if he would have just showed up one hand later, we could have had a, we had more. Fun. I love going to Vegas. It's gonna be fun, Bob. We uh, we wish you a lot of winnings. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Before we uh, dip out, I did want to say send our wishes to our friend, which I will guaranteed to butcher her last name, but uh, Shannon McMinimi, I think it is. Um, we know Shannon. She's come to all the events. Yep. Um, she unfortunately lost her husband uh, kind of unexpectedly. They just got married. They've been together for about 10 years, I think, and they had just gotten married. And we, I knew he was sick and battling cancer, but it sounds like this was kind of unexpected. So best wishes to her. Hopefully see her soon somewhere. Um, just, just We're thinking about you, and uh, hopefully see you soon. We are thinking about you. Best wishes to you. And uh, Casey, um, don't be late for the show on Friday, please. <laughs> We're flying in Thursday, <clears throat> just just because of that. Just make sure you have a key to her there. Whatever. <laughs> make sure y'all take Went Thursday night off. Yeah. Uh, y'all take for, Thursday. For you night. guys, make sure you all survive since y'all yeah, are planning on coming there. out here tomorrow. Somebody's got to get there to have it ready for y'all. Okay, we'll nope. be ready. It would when not be there you Thursday. that I would trust. No, I'm saying they these guys have to get there from the track. I don't. No, I know, Brett. Yeah, we can count on you. Well, I'm good. Yeah, might be the first time in my life there. I've said that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really, and the last <laughs> <laughs> shots before the show. Casey's buying. Casey buying. Ooh. All right. It depends on Chad's buying. It depends on if Chad. Gets I'll call Chad and say thanks. <laughs> 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 we'll see y'all out there. Looking forward to it, and uh, y'all have a great week. Holla. 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 Holla.